What's up, everybody? How's it going? <laughs> Holy shit, you timed that well. What the hell? X crazy. Thank you for the 13 gift subs. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know what to say, dude. How's it going, chat? How's it going? Hope you all are fine on this beautiful day. I'm still a little bit tired. It's on though. It, it shows in OBS. What the hell? It works. That is the weirdest error I've ever had so far. Because the thing is, the bar was moving in OBS. Do you have music? Do we have music? No music? That's also showing in OBS though. Hold up. Uh, properties. Spotify. Now? We hear remix. <laughs> Only the remix. Holy shit. Where? I can't hear the remix. <laughs> what the hell is going on? I'm not hearing the remix. Oh, now I can. Music is back. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. Okay. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. Okay, well, that ruined my introduction. That ruined my introduction. Scuffed start. Let's go. Anyways, I was saying... I was saying welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to a normal ass stream. I can't wait to just stream for a normal length. Um, and holy shit, thank you guys so much for all the all the love, all the gift subs, everything. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, we did make it just to, just in case you missed it very quickly. We did make it to, uh, to master dual worlds. We got second place after all. And, um, yeah, it, I am so glad. I am so happy that it, that it paid off, that all that was worth it in the end. Uh, we will talk about the system and what I think about it after, a little bit later. Because I have a few things to say about this, but... Yeah, a lot of fun, but also stressful. I mean, the thing is, I did enjoy it too. I did enjoy it, even though it may not have looked like it, but that is just how I look when I'm focused or when I'm tired, you know? There's like, it's... It, I did enjoy it overall. I think it was a good experience, especially because I streamed it. I think it would have been a lot more miserable if I hadn't streamed it. I feel like that helped. Um, but 
yeah, it still was incredibly stressful. And I, like, on Monday, I was actually doing okay. On Monday, I was actually doing okay. But then yesterday, yesterday, I was miserable. Yesterday was bad, bad. But today, it's, it's better. I'm, I'm like rebooting my, I'm rebooting my system and everything. But like yesterday, dude, yesterday, Monday, the thing is, you won't believe it, but um, on, uh, on, on Monday, I, after the this, this thingy, I couldn't even sleep because of all the, because I was so excited for like the, the end of it. I was, that was like, I don't know, too much adrenaline or some shit. I couldn't sleep at 7 a.m. in the morning because it was like, it was light outside. It was, uh, it was, I don't know, I was, I was, I was tired, but I was also kind of hype. And then I, I just couldn't sleep. Like, I, I laid down, and then I, 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 I fell asleep after, like, one or two hours, and then I only slept for, like, two hours or something. Your usual wake-up time? Yeah, normally we wake up at, like, between, somewhere between seven and eight. Somewhere between 7 and 8 is where we usually wake up, so I, I couldn't sleep. And, but then, yesterday, I was... Yesterday was dead. Yesterday was... Uh, yeah, I don't know. But I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel better now. I'm starting to feel better now. We managed to wake up at a reasonable time this morning, and yeah, it's okay. But yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm very happy about it. I'm very happy about it. We're going to be uh we're going to be going to worlds. I'm going to take Quantel and then someone else. I don't know yet who exactly it's going to be, but that's the story for another day. There's been a few questions like what happens if you like some people asked what what happens if you qualify for the TCG World Championship too? Cuz you obviously can't play both. Uh, you can't play both, uh, TCG and Master Duel, because they're on the same, they're on the same date. But, uh, I had previously decided for myself, if that happens, if that was to happen, I would, um, I would play TCG. So, I guess if we make it to TCG Worlds, this was all kind of just for fun, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, yeah. So that is that was my personal decision. I think if I make uh, if I make it to TCG Worlds, I'm gonna be playing. Uh, I'm gonna be playing TCG. But uh, yeah. Either way, uh, I don't know who who was first place. Actually, I don't know who this is. Um, they have not come forth. I think and and said who it was. Thank you, Lithium. Appreciate that. Also, everyone else, thank you for all the support and all the... Uh, everyone watching, I hope you all enjoyed the streams over the weekend. Um, I... Yeah, I, I, I'm glad that it turned out the way it did, because, like, I would have done this anyways. It didn't, it didn't matter, technically, whether it was going to be 50 people watching or as many people as it was. I was going to do this anyways, because it's just like, it's, I don't know, this is my competitive nature is one of the things that you now learned about me is like, I, I had no choice, basically. I didn't like the system for, for Master Duel, but uh, the, the, I don't know, I, I, I just want to, when I, when there's an opportunity to go to Worlds, I just have no choice. I have to do it. And um, I'm glad that people liked it, you know, I, I'm glad that people liked um, the, the streams and the content. And all the support was amazing. I, I never thought, I never thought we would get to, um, I never thought we would get to viewer numbers like we did. I, I really didn't think that was a thing, but it was, and that was great. But yeah, like I said, I, after doing it, I think it is definitely not the best way they could do it for a qualifying system. I think it was incredibly difficult and uh, stressful and it really like yeah i don't know it really it makes people spend their weekend in a really unhealthy way and i don't like that the thing is i don't know if this is going to change anytime soon because let's not pretend like this is the uh this is a new thing you know like people keep forgetting about 
Duel Links, right? And let me tell you, this is how they are doing it in Duel Links since basically day one. Since Duel Links has a world championship, this is how you qualify for it, pretty much. So I don't think that... First of all, this was not unexpected, right? We sa I said this day one when Master Duel dropped and, I was, and they announced that it was going to have a world championship. I said, I hope that is not how you qualify. But of course it was. And um, I'm so it was to no surprise that this is how it works. And I also don't think that they are going to change it because they didn't like people have been complaining about it in Duel Links, I think, since forever. And uh, they didn't change it. So I don't think it's going to change for the TCG either. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Like I said, I, I don't like it, but. I, as a competitive nature that I am. Uh, as the competitive nature that I am, I just had to try. And uh, yeah, it is what it is. We made it. I'm very happy we, we did. I'm very happy we made it. And uh, we're going to be going to Japan in August for Worlds. This is going to be my fifth, uh, my fifth attempt at becoming a world champion. After, what was it, 2012, 2017, 2018, and 2019 for the TCG. And we're going to be, uh, we're going to be focusing on that a lot. If we don't make it to the TCG World Championship, we're really going to, we're going to try and finally make it happen. The closest I've gotten is third in, in 2012. That's the closest I've ever gotten. And we, I really do want to take it a step further. So we'll see. It does not stop here. We will cook. We will cook. All right. Yeah. Uh, I can show you the lists that I use. We can talk about the event a little bit. All that good stuff. Let me boot up Master Duel. I, uh, something I, you know, <laughs> we're not going to play a game of Master Duel. Just to be clear, just to get that out of my system right now. We are not playing a game of Master Duel today. <laughs> that is not something we are doing. Absolutely not. <laughs> Did you see the bandits? We'll also talk about that. Look, Jad, we have some, we have time. This is not going to be a 60 hour stream, but we have some time. Chill. We will talk about all that. We'll talk about all that. We'll talk about what's next. We'll talk about everything. All right. So, uh, I don't know if I have my, so the last deck we, we played or I played was this. Which I think overall, I think I played the most games with Sprite in the event. I didn't count. I didn't count it, but I think overall it was the most games with Sprite. Because I think we switched to Sprite like halfway and Sprite was just a lot faster. You played over 200 games on day three alone? Yeah, because, like, I think Sprite... I think the, the reason why Sprite was the pick... I think the reason why Sprite was the pick is because Tier was just too slow. It was probably better. I probably had a higher win rate with Tier Limits, maybe. I don't actually know. But it's just Tier Limit wins, on average, dude, 15 or 20 minutes. Sprite wins, very often, Normal Summon Beaver cross out their maxi or ash their maxi they scoop right and also the other way around is like very often when when they go first and i don't have a hand trap or whatever against tier limits i would just i would literally just concede right i i i, I remember doing that multiple times of just like your opponent goes first activate freaking pearl or i know i don't have a hand trap i leave which is not a good sign for the format but um in terms of grinding as fast as possible, knowing that you've lost as early as possible is a good thing, right? Like, I felt like that was an advantage. But, yeah. Thoughts on Exosister? I think Exosister is a very mediocre deck, but uh, it, had a, it, it did feel like it wasn't bad for this event because it is okay against Tier Limit. That's the only reason why I felt like it did even remotely okay. 
Uh, and then, like, Ishizu tier, I don't even remember what the deck was we played the most with. I think we switched it up between, but this was, this was what I started with. I ended up cutting some stuff later. We changed a lot of things throughout the event. I don't, ha I don't think I have one set deck list that I can show. We definitely took out the changes of heart. Uh, we played Super Poly for a while, then we cut Super Poly for a while. We definitely ended on Imperm at some point. Uh, and we didn't play Snow. Something like this. Uh, yeah, we, we, we switched it up a lot. Global One posted his deck list. I have that open already in the background. There's some, um... The top 100 decks have been posted, I think. Um, well, like, not, not everything, but, like, the ones that they know. Uh, I don't know if there's much reason to go over it. I'm pretty interested in this deck in particular. This looks pretty cool. Hold up. The, the first place from Japan who was also, I think, first in the world, played some Sprite, which is a very standard list. It's very close to what, what, what I played, only it has Ghost Reaper, which is interesting. But the, the other deck that they used was Branded Tier Limit, which is a deck that I had some experimentation with before the event. And I thought it was quite cool, but I couldn't really put my finger on how exactly you're supposed to play it. And their version looks pretty interesting as well. I like it. So cool. It's basically, when I tested it, I, I basically had a lot more of the branded stuff. Like, I had Aluber and Opening in there. But what they are doing is it's just branded fusion as just another starter, basically, right? It's just another starter for the deck. Just another card to send a... um, Just another card to send a tier limit from deck to graveyard. And other than that, it's just a normal tier limit deck. And if you don't draw Branded Fusion, you're not locked into fusions. You can just do whatever you want. And if you draw Branded Fusion, basically, instead of making instead of making a, uh, a rank 4, you just get Mirror Jade, which is also good. So I think it's... Um, I think it was solid. Other than that, I scrolled through this this morning. I scrolled through this this morning, and I didn't see anything super specific. I, I One thing I find worth noting always is that there's always a difference, I feel like, between... Um, OCG players and TCG players when it comes to deck lists. Like, for example, I'm pretty convinced that almost no TCG player was using Exchange and Gravekeeper's Trap, but a lot of OCG players did. Uh, I think a lot of OCG players did play Exchange and Gravekeeper's Trap. Like here, this, this, this guy played it too, and then, yeah. Global Rank 2 played it as well. It's an easy win against the mirror, I guess. I mean, I, it's... I don't think that is your reasoning. It's... I think it's just that it makes Mudora a lot stronger if you draw it. Like, I, I, did, I did feel like drawing Mudora was frustrating because it just feels so much worse than drawing Keldo. If that makes any sense. Like, drawing Keldo is just so much better than drawing Mudora if you don't have target for Mudora. Right? Because it's just strictly... Uh, it's just a strictly worse card, basically. Quantle got sacked a couple times by Gravekeeper's Trap picks, pitch exchange from hand. I mean, we got sacked by Gravekeeper's Trap, too. Like, uh, I, I think we lost in the mirror to it. I think we lost with Sprite, because if they have this... They just keep discarding the mill 5 guys every turn, and you just cannot beat that. Even if you, like... You max see them, and then they just pass, and then they Gravekeeper's Trap discard Kelbeck in your turn or some shit, and it's just like, it's Troll Despair. It is not terrible. Um, the, the problem with it is, of course, if you draw Gravekeeper's Trap or Exchange of the Spirit, they don't do a lot, right? So they're kind of like a high-risk, high-reward kind of thing, which is, I think, something that inherently, somehow, the OCG likes to do that more than the TCG players. So, yeah, there's that. But other than that, really, I think scrolling through here, literally, it shows that there was only really three decks that performed in this event. It was Ishizu tier, obviously. It was Exo Sister because it beats Ishizu tier a decent amount of time. And it was Sprite. Like, it's basically Ishizu tier was like the top deck. Exo Sister was the deck to beat the top deck. And Sprite was the deck that was like okay against everything, right? Like, Sprite was decent into Exo Sister and okay into tier. Um,. Which is, I think, why it felt the best to me. 
because there was like no matchup that you queue into with sprite that's just like strictly bad right but yeah and that's that there's really nothing else here it's only exo sisters and exo sisters sprite and tier that is the meta right now there's like global rank 55 numeron whatever that means i don't even know what the cutoff was for top top 55 actually we can check we can check that uh ranking so 10th place was 58k 100 and 100th place was 45k so i guess it's around 47 or something that they got to 10th place was first in eu uh i don't think that was was it abc no it's not I mean, the thing is, uh, yeah, it's, it's very packed towards the top. It was very packed towards the top where I was, we were one win away from first place in Europe. And we were also, I think, one win away. Yeah, if we win one game, we're also top, top 10 in, in, in the world. Um, so with one win, we would have passed three more people. The DC incident on 59k was so unfortunate. Oh, yeah, that hurt. That shit hurt. Uh, oh, yeah, we got an icon, too. It's only the silver one. Which, kinda, which is kind of annoying, but it's fine, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to... I'm not going to complain. Uh, which one is it? Yeah, the silver... Yeah, for top... Sixth place global only had 180 games played, 66%, and didn't even qualify because they're Japanese. It's, I think it's an unfortunate thing um, that if you look at this, I don't know what the best solution to this would be, but you look at this and you're like, okay, look. In... Everyone here was competing against each other, right? We all played against the same people, right? Everyone was in the same, in the same, basically in the same pot, right? We were all playing against each other. So we technically all competed in the same tournament. We all, it was the same difficulty for everyone, right? Time zone is a factor, but yeah, time zones are not a factor because almost everyone played the entire weekend, I'm pretty sure. Almost everyone probably played for the entire weekend. And the fact that you look at Japan and look at this. Two players qualified for Japan with 72,000 and 67,000. And then third place with 60,000 points did not qualify. Fourth place with 60,000 points did not qualify. Fifth place with 60,000 points did not qualify. Sixth place, 59,000. Uh, seventh place, fifty nine thousand, and eighth place, fifty eight thousand. Literally, all of these eight people have more points than the first place has points in any other region. I think, almost, not in Asia. Asia ex uh, is is in ex but like in Europe, for example, they would have been first place. All of them. All of the top eight players from Japan would have had more points than anyone else in Europe. So the fact that the fact that they don't get to play the world championship, even though they performed better than us, it's a it's a it it it's it leaves a sour aftertaste at least. I've I've said this beforehand. I mean, of course you can't just I don't think you should just let eight people from Japan qualify because I think the reason why the reason why they uh they have this high points is because it's just a very competitive region, right? Like the thing is if yeah i don't it's it's different because then like we would have also kept playing right like the first place could have never afforded to stay at 58 and and just say yeah fuck it i'm just gonna sit here uh, they had to play more so maybe we would have climbed more as well uh whatever like you you it's it's it is what it is but 
Like, you look at North America, for example, here, which is like two people qualifying with 53 and 50. Which I don't, I honestly don't know what the reason for that is. I don't, I don't really know why, uh, I don't know why NA wasn't as competitive this time around. Maybe it was because there was a big YCS taking place and like a lot of the good players decided to go there. Um, but yeah, I don't, which I don't know about, by the way, I'm pretty sure someone like Jesse could have just done this, right? Like, I, I feel like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that decision, but. Sam almost made it. Yeah, Sam got fourth. Sam got fourth. And uh, I think Raymond Dai is, is second place. I think he was uh, he was streaming as well. JC said he didn't like the way the tournament was structured and thought it was miserable. Well, he, he was right about that. He was definitely right about that. Well, it definitely was that. But, yeah. Uh, anyways, it is what it is. Chat, we made it. That's the most important thing for me personally right now. Um, I can only hope that they improve on the system next year. I'm also, I'm specifically glad that um, we were able to qualify even though... Like, everyone before the event said, like, oh, this is going to be impossible. Everyone is going to be uh, account sharing, and it's going to be impossible for any single individual to qualify. Everyone else is going to be at such an advantage and whatnot. And, like, I don't know. I think it was... At the end of the day, it. I don't think it helped that much. Like, um... Because at the end of the day, you still need to be just good and focused for a long time. And yeah, I'm, I'm just glad that we were basically able to prove that it didn't have to be that way, right? We didn't have to be. It didn't have to be that way. It was definitely possible to qualify uh, alone. Because uh, we did that. So, yeah. People were pessimistic. I will say, I was pessimistic too. I think the system was not great. I don't think the system was great. Like, I, 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 it was, um, it was, I was super stressed out the entire weekend. I lost literally all sense of time, like, yesterday and, and, and Monday, my entire schedule, my, like, everything, it was just, it was destroyed. Uh, it was, yeah, it was something else. But yeah, we just had to, we had to do it, I guess. We, we had to do it. Was qualifying for Lower Worlds better? I think you said you did so in the past. Oh yeah, it was. Lower Worlds was a way better system. For Lore, for Legends of Runeterra Worlds, uh, they just had like, basically they had like online YCSs. And you would collect points uh, depending on how you did there. And then they had like uh, monthly or like the every season, the top finishing players on the ladder because they actually have a ranking. They get points and whatnot. And then like some of those qualified for worlds and it was just a whole lot better. But yeah, it's yeah. The lore system changed. Well, that's how I remember it. I don't currently play anymore, but that's how it was when I qualified. Please do a deck tier list for a new TCG ban list. We'll talk about that today too. I will. I don't think we'll do a tier list today, but I have it planned for probably tomorrow. What do you think is the best solution for YGO on this matter? Okay, so I think there could be two ways to do this. There could be two very good ways to do this, um, depending on how they want to do it. So there is. I think there is a much better solution if they just want to have it done on one weekend. If they want to do it, if they want to have it done on one weekend, I think there is a good way to do that, which is something that they actually do in Pokemon, uh, in the Pokemon video game. There is the same kind of thing where there's an online competition that lasts from Friday to Sunday. The difference is that they have a set number of games that you can play each day, right? I think it's 15 games per day. So a total of 45 games in the entire tournament. 
and that's it. You cannot play more than that. You can decide when you play your games. It doesn't matter. You can play all 45 on Sunday if you didn't have time on Saturday or like whatever. Like you don't have to do everything on one day, but you can also you can just do 15 each day and that's fine. Uh, and then it's over, right? That's too low. Then do more in Yu-Gi-Oh! If Yu-Gi-Oh! games are more or something, if Yu-Gi-Oh! games are faster, you can do more. You can do 20 games a day. You can do 30 games a day. It doesn't really matter. But just like, it removes the whole you can't sleep thingy and you have to play as much as possible because it's a set number of games. That's what I'm trying to, to say. It's like, I think that's a fair way to do it. If you say, let's say, let's just say it's 100 games, right? Let's just say it's 100 games uh if 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 you get top two in europe within 100 games i think it's fair to say that you are a good player you know maybe you got a little lucky but that is also part of the thing right i don't know i think that would be one way to do it if if they want to do it in one weekend just one weekend get everything sorted i think that would be a way to do it um it's going to feel really bad when you have bad luck in the last 10 games. Yeah, of course. But you can also, if you, if you think you're high enough on the ladder, you can stop, right? You don't have to play full. Very often in Pokemon, they just stop. Like, if they reach a certain rating, a certain rank, and they are happy with that, they can just stop playing. You don't have to do more. You don't have to do the full 45. But um, either way, um, that would be one way to do it. Uh, that would be one way to do it if you want to do it in one weekend. The much better way, of course, the much better way, of course, would be to uh, to have it to implement some kind of ranking system, a ranked ladder, and have like each month, you know, top 100 get some points, top 10 get some points, first place gets even more points, and then like you collect points over the entire year. And then you have like the top, the top two point earners qualify or something like that. Or you make like a top eight uh, playoff or something like that with the point earners or something. That would, of course, be the best system, right? You'd have to grind constantly. Yeah, there's pros and cons, but I think I'd rather grind. Uh, I'd rather grind for a good rank each month than grinding, than doing this. <laughs> Because you don't, you can at least sleep each month, you know what I mean? Like, you can just, like, play to the highest rank and then just play some rank. You know, that's how it is in other games. I, I think it, it'd be fine. But, yeah. Anyways, we don't have to speculate about it. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a point in speculating about it. Because at the end of the day, we don't make the decisions. Uh, we just have, that's the unfortunate part, is we just have to accept whatever they throw at us. And, you know, some people have the ability to just say like, hey, I don't like that system. I'm not going to play in it. I personally don't have that. I personally don't have that. I am too competitive of a Yu-Gi-Oh player. I just have to try, right? If they, if, they, if they keep this system, I will probably be here next year playing again. It is what it is, even though I don't like it. But yeah. All right. And um, that being said, we are definitely not uh, <laughs> we are definitely not playing a game of of, of Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel today. <laughs> we we do not do that. Absolutely not. Uh, what we can talk about is that there has been a new Forbidden and Limited list in Master Duel. Uh, Chaotic Meatball, thank you for the raid. Welcome everybody. We're talking about we've just been talking about the experience of playing the world's qualifier and now we're talking about the new Forbidden Limited list. And we will also talk about the new Forbidden Limited TCG list later, which I'm still mad about that they dropped that in the middle of this thing, but it is what it is. Well, at least they dropped it, you know? So let's talk about that later. Um Cards to be semi-limited, sprite blue. Um I understand. I guess. I, I'm not a big fan of it, of course, because Sprite Giga Chad, you know. But the... Uh, in general, I also don't agree with these consistency hits. I don't like the way that they are doing this. It's like a very OCG mentality kind of thing. Is like, 
you we only hit the we only hit the the we, we hit the consistency cards we don't really change what the deck is doing right uh but we make it inconsistent i don't like that you know like i for example as much as i love sprite elf i think banning sprite elf or even for that matter limiting sprite elf would have been a more healthy way to approach it because that drastically changes what sprite does not how consistently it does it right like sprite is not weaker because of this it still has the exact same boards the exact same whatever but just less consistently right just like less less cons less consistently and i don't like that i don't think that's the best way to do it but it's a very ocg kind of thing and since i think the i think master duel is run by ocg konami i think it's to be expected uh two girsu um yeah i don't think that matters too much the dear servant is a good card um i don't know if i th i do think that a deck like dogmatica is a little bit better in a best of one environment than it is in a best of three but i don't know if it's good enough still but yeah was girsu at one yeah girsu was at one in in master duel and it still is at one in the ocg but it's at three in the tcg and it doesn't really do anything even though uh, i mean we don't have we have harp horror in master duel so it's a good card uh metaverse to two that card can honestly be at three as long as we don't have Mystic Mind, but for some reason, I guess they're taking it slow. This I quite frankly don't like. You know, you you know my opinion on uh, you very well know my opinion on on Drytron, which is I think the only deck that really benefits from this. I guess Libromancer is something that slightly benefits from it, but I don't know if that's a selling point for Benton. And then we have the the actual hits, cause uh, like okay, the sprite blue is a significant hit. The uh, the unbans are not as significant, but here we have the the real deal. We have Keldo to one, Mudora to one, Agido to one, which I think it's funny that they leave us with two Kelbecks. It's funny that they somehow decided that Agido, Mudora, and Keldo should be at one, but Kelbeck is at, still at two. I will say. Of course, these are warranted hit hits, absolutely. Definitely warranted hits. These cards needed to be hit, for sure. I'm very happy about this. Um, I will say, I think there is a world where Tierlament is still probably very good. Right? Because, like, we still have... Two of each of the names. Uh, we still have Kit Kalos, most importantly. I, th I still think it's pretty solid. Uh, I, I like that. I, I still like it because it's going to feel a lot more like a human deck. You know, like when you play against... Literally, when I play against Tierlament, it's only ever the Ishizu cards that feel absolutely horrible to play against. Everything else is fine, in my opinion. I'm fine playing against Tierlament in general. Um, it's just when you go first and you set up a board and they go Keldo, Discard, Agido, you already know they play through freaking 10 interruptions and still have six cards in hand after. And it's just not, you know, it's just not cool. Bistials for that soon. That too, right? If we get Bistials anytime soon, I think we're absolutely fine, right? And this, the fact that they only have one of each Shuffler... Um, also makes it so I can see myself playing other decks again that rely on the graveyard because one of each shuffler, there's a very good chance they don't find them. And even if they do find them, there is a very good chance that you can outgrind the shufflers, right? That you can like, let's say you play runic and they can, they can take away one of your draws or maybe two of your draws. But if you can play, you can eventually outgrind the shufflers, right? Like something like runic sprite, I think is okay if your opponent uh has two shufflers right um you can technically still play that just makes it saki i i i agree i don't like that these cards still exist but very in a very small capacity right like every once in a while if they still play them they will still open keldo pitch mudora uh, or keldo pitch kelbeck or something and that feels really bad if that happens right i i don't think those cards are the ones that you want at one but 
I'm looking at it from the perspective of like when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh ban lists, I've really learned in the last couple years to to look at the positives rather than the negatives. I rather have one Mudora than three. Whether it should be at zero or not doesn't matter here. The fact is it went from three to one and that is good. So we'll t I'll, I'll take it. And that, I think that's a very healthy mentality when it comes to these kind of things. Because otherwise you just never, you're never done complaining if you always only point out the things that are not enough or should be different. You know what I mean? Of course, we also do that sometimes because every once in a while I do like to complain. But in general, when I think about these things, I like to be like, yeah, this is the right direction, you know? There's probably no card that has annoyed me as much this weekend as Cyberstein. So I'm very happy to see this card. This little dude freaking ter terrorized me this weekend. I hated Cyberstein. Uh, Smoke Grenade is also a very good riddance. Uh, and terraforming, honestly, is also pretty based. I'm happy with that. I I think I think it's fine. I think uh, in some decks terraforming is okay, but specifically when I'm thinking about cards like uh, when I'm thinking about cards like Pearl of Rhino and whatnot, I'm like very glad that they are now actually at one and not at two. Do you dislike Martha now as much as Circular? No, Martha, I don't hate Martha because when my opponent activates Martha, I know I'm probably winning, right? That's the difference. When my opponent activates Circular, I've lost. When my opponent activates Martha, I've probably won, so... Martha is fine. Uh, overall, once again, another good ban list, I think, for Master Duel. Uh, Master Duel constantly does this, and I keep repeating myself every time they drop a ban list. Uh, their ban lists always seem kind of small from a TCG player perspective, but that is because we get one almost every month. So, in that in that context, absolutely fine, absolutely fine. Very small adjustments to the current format. Almost all of these hits make sense. Each individual hit probably makes the game better. And um, specifically, the, the most amount of hits went to tier limits. So, absolutely on board with it. Master Duel ban list feels more like patch notes. Well, but that's what it is, right? That's what a ban list does. Uh, Ryan Joe, thank you for the 13 months. And Damien forgot the lyrics. Thank you for the 7 months. Appreciate that. Welcome back. And everyone else before that, too, by the way. Uh, Cerulean, Niels Tiemann, Hoshino, thank you guys for the subs. Appreciate you. Um, and honestly, that is already pretty much what I wanted to talk about in terms of Master Duel for today. Um... As much as, of course, I'm hyped to qualify for the World Championships in Master Duel. The, the World Championship is in, I think, what is it, two months? Two and a half months? Something like that. We'll have more time to talk about what the format is going to be and whatnot. But, matter of fact is, we don't know exactly what the format is going to be for Worlds. We don't know what, what happens until then. We're probably expecting more ban lists until then. Uh, we're expecting new card releases that we can't really uh, predict exactly. You know, I mean, at some point, Biz deals are probably going to happen. At some point, whatever other cards are going to happen, are are we going to have Kash Tira? We I don't know. Uh, it's 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 very much up in the air to what's going to happen until Worlds. So there's really no point to start grinding. Um, the more important part. And that's uh, what's what's up next for me personally is we have TCG, which someone in chat just asks whether I'm going to qualify or try to qualify for the TCG World Championship one last time, just one last time to get that question out of my system. Finally, the reason why I, I tried qualifying for Master Duel Worlds or the well, we, we succeeded is not because I want to go there more than the TCG World Championship. I would prefer the TCG World Championship. Uh, but there is no way to know whether I can guaranteed qualify for the World Championships in the TCG until 
the European Championship, which happens in pretty much exactly one month. So there's two ways I could qualify. There's two ways I could qualify for the TCG World Championship. Uh, number one is by just getting top three at the European Championship, which is very hard to do, but theoretically could happen, of course. And the second way is by going, uh, by going through the World's Points qualifiers, which I am qualified for that tournament. I am qualified. I am... I think first or second place in points right now. Uh, and we are going to play for three spots at Worlds with 32 players on the Friday of the European Championship. Uh, and so, of course, I'm going to try my best to qualify there too. It's just very nice to have the Master Duel qualification as like the, uh, as like the backup, you know? It's kind of like it's the backup. So, th yeah, three out of 32 players are going to qualify for, for Worlds from that. I'm going to try. I'm going to be there. Uh, if I qualify for the TCG, I'm pretty sure I'm going to play the TCG World Championships. Um, the reason why I obviously still had to try for Master Duel is in case that doesn't work. Uh, and this was a month before, so of course I tried. All this to say that there's been some very exciting news in the TCG world while we were busy qualifying for, for Master Duel. Um, which is that they dropped the freaking ban list, which uh, at this point... I'm taking that personal because they could have not dropped this at a, at a worse time for literally any content creator on the planet. Like, Farfa was commentating UK Nationals. Uh, all the American content creators were, were playing YCS Philadelphia or busy playing the, the Master Duel Qualifier. I was busy playing the Master Duel Qualifier. It was literally... The worst possible timing for anyone to react to this ban list. It was literally, there was France WCQ. By the way, who won? Was there? Uh, oh, we had a, no, you had a regional. You didn't have nationals yet. Um, it was just like, it was the worst time to drop a ban list. But I will say, once again, trying to see the positives, they did drop a ban list. And I've already reacted to it. And I think this ban list, after thinking about it even more, this ban list is freaking hype. I think this ban list is freaking hype. You can't change my mind. I am so much more hyped for German nationals than I was before this ban list. I can't even put it into words. There's literally uh, so many things that are better now in the TCG than they were before. Uh, I think the only thing that leaves... Okay, let's go, let's go about this one by one, because I have, I think I made one m relatively big misjudgment when I reacted to it for the first time, which I didn't realize how big of a hit this was. Uh, so maybe in case, so I, I think, so the reason why I didn't re realize how big of a change this was is because I only looked at the effect of the card. I was like, this is not the best of the memories. This is not the best of the memories because it's not the one that lets you attack multiple times. This is not the one that lets you draw cards. You can't even activate it as the first action. It's not one of the ones that you can use to play around Droll and Lockbird because it needs to choose a monster on the field. So you can't activate it in standby phase or you can't activate it when it's your only card. Um, a draw phase, rather. The reason why I underestimated how important this card is is because this is the one that's mentioned on Plump. And I didn't realize that at the time. Uh, which means that this is actually the one you want in the graveyard, like, the most, right? This is the one you really want uh, to go into plump turn one to attach all your shit, right? That's the big... That's a very big deal. Um, that's a very big deal for Purely. Um, and the fact that it went from three to one does not mean that you have two less copies. You have a lot less copies now because you cannot guaranteed find it anymore with my friend as well, right? The fact that you cannot guaranteed find this card at all anymore, right? You can't search it with, you cannot search it with, uh, with uh, the black cat. Uh, the black cat can search my friend, but my friend only has a one in three chance to find this card. So, and Plump is by far the best one. 
Plump is by... We went from nine copies to... Basically, right? Because uh, Black Cat and my friend and Delicious were all access to this card, right? And now you only have one. Field spell and terraforming. Field spell and terraforming don't help at all because the field spell attaches in the end phase. And in the end phase, it's already too late to make your uh your plump. So I don't look, I haven't thought about this enough yet. I we will make a a first tier list, I think, tomorrow on stream, what I think about the 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 decks and their potential. But we can already start theorizing a little bit. Uh, my take on my take on purely with only one delicious memory is the following. I think the deck is still good. I think the deck is still good. I think the deck will specifically still be very good when the new XYZ comes out. Um then the new the new rank 2 will just will still be very good, right? Um you could play a going second purely version where you rely on happiness a lot more. Right? I could see that. Like, if you rely on happiness OTKs or big Zeus plays, maybe it's fine. Maybe it's okay, yeah. Um, one other way, though, that I think is maybe a little bit underestimated is you could genuinely play a version of Purely that has even topped, I believe, a Nationals before, and that is Purely Sprite. Now, hear me out. It's not just some Sprite Hopium, copium. Because with sprites, you can just heart make the plump. And I think that could be a way. I think that could genuinely be a way. I don't know how the list exactly would look. I don't know how exactly the list would look. But I think if you can just heart make the plump, you, you solve all your issues, right? Noir has no quick effect without a level 1. Does it not? Hold up. But then what was the point of, uh, what was the point of that deck? I, didn't that deck top? There was a sprite purely, right? That top. Show list. I mean, let I me mean, I mean, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. It was, I, I can find it. Hold up. There was a list. Uh, I don't remember which nationals it was. It was one of the earlier ones. Uh, Portugal, maybe? Ireland. Here. So. Yeah, I was I was imagining something like this. But then I don't understand if we can't use Noir. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That makes this deck a lot worse. Lithium has the hopium on yeah. Uh, let me check. Lithium. Delicious at one. We don't care. Oh, I'm pretty sure we care, but... I'm pretty sure we care, but... What's up, guys? Welcome back. So first... Oh, hold up. No, we need to repeat that. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back. So, Burly. Burly new TCG format. Um... I guess, I guess against all expectations, Konami already hit Burly, and it was kind of like a big hit. Already played the okay, deck some so time ago. But what we're doing is we're deep drawing, is what you're trying to say. We're deep drawing to get the delicious memory, right? I don't know if this is it, Chief. I don't know if this is it. Because I, I don't see anything that helps you when you go second. That was uh, with the new OCG support from our used to. Like before, you saw maybe what was it? Three snow and one bro, or maybe e it's just a dark world deck, right? But you play purely in it, which you don't need. 
it's it's I, I i can i i get behind i can get behind the idea i don't hate i don't hate hate it but uh, i don't know if i don't know if this is it but yeah uh overall though i want to say a thing or two about them hitting super heavy samurai and purely because a lot of people i i think um and i get why i think it's fair to be confused um i think it i did not personally expect them to do it hitting uh delicious memory and super heavy samurai scarecrow so hard right off the bat overall i have to say though that i don't hate the decision i i don't hate the decision because be i i think if they were planning to make a ban list right now it would have been weird to not touch these decks at all because they would have been very powerful and we just like it's it's a little bit of a preemptive fit and honestly for both of those decks um i am not sure if they are dead i still think i still think that the the super heavy samurai hit is a little bit harder than the purely hit even though both are major hits um specifically the purely hit makes less sense to me because purely i don't think was as toxic of a deck as super heavy samurai uh that is yeah that's weird i think super heavy samurai is just dead now right i mean i'm pretty sure that vakaushi still does some shit like i'm pretty sure that if you start vakaushi you can still do stuff the big deal is that the uh the the soul piercer is not a starter anymore right the soul piercer is not a starter anymore and the the bike also only searches soul piercer right the bike only searches the the bike didn't search wakaushi right or could it Oh, bike searches everything. Which is the one that only so searches a super heavy samurai soul? Is that the scale? The big Benkai? One of them only searches the, the, the souls. The Benkai, okay. Yeah. Um, so bike still... I, do, I mean, the thing is, right? You can still do... You still get shit, right? You still get set up scales, Barone and whatnot. They just do Barone Regulus and Apo times three. That's it. Um, but yeah, with only nine cards, right? O only. With only nine cards because the wagon doesn't work anymore. It'll be an engine for other decks now. See, and that's, I think, I think you could argue, I think you could really argue that the cards are still strong enough. I think what it does now is still debatable whether you want that in the game, right? It kind of feels like a mini adventure engine to me. Or what 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 why is it even why do why do we even call it mini? It's like bigger than that, right? It's kind of like a it's kind of like still an adventure engine that we just have now, right? Um which honestly still is not bad. Uh, and then, of course, I mean, the most based hit of the century is Mathmex Circular. I love that for us. Love that. The world is healing. Um, what else is interesting? Runic Fountain to 2 is, I think, the most curious hit on this ban list. I am going to be quite honest. I don't understand it at all. From the perspective of a runic duelist, right? I've played a lot of runic at, at large scale events. I've never entered a tournament with more than two fountains. The only deck that this potentially hits is runic stun, which in my book is a good thing. Right? In my book, it's a good thing to hit runic stun and not runic d d like decks. I like runic decks. I don't know. I think it's fine. I, I, don't, I don't mind this. I'm okay. Runic is kind of giga chat and I'll, I'll, I'll die on that hill. I don't care. I like runic. In general, this does not feel... I feel like they stepped out of their way to make this ban list. It, this, this does not feel like a very usual TCG ban list, if, if you get what I'm saying. 
it they there are a lot of hits on here that I did not expect them to make. Not in a bad way. Not in a bad way, but I didn't I don't think it falls into their usual like pattern to um to hit new decks early for once. Like I mean, look look at look at it this way. We've been complaining about Konami doing things too late for like forever, right? So literally no one has any right to complain about them hitting purely and super heavy samurai super early. You literally are not supposed we are not supposed to complain about that because that is what we wanted forever. We wanted preemptive and hits that are in time and they have not they they haven't even killed the decks. Believe me, Super Heavy Samurai is still a powerful engine and purely when the new XYZ comes out will still be a solid deck or maybe even is now. So you know, Super Heavy Samurai is dead. I mean, as like as its own deck, I think so too. As its own separate deck, I don't think people are going to be using Super Heavy Samurai as much anymore. But I can definitely see someone playing like nine cards that make Barone the Fleur before they combo. So I, I like that. I like that they are... I, I feel This feels like they are listening to some of our concerns, right? Like the concern that we had... Uh, that they hit cards way too late when they already were a problem and we already had to deal with that, you know? Like, Cyberstein, for example, is a hit that... Cyberstein was nowhere. No one played Cyberstein, right? It's just a toxic card that didn't have a home right now. And they realized that, hey, at some point, this card could be a problem. So uh, let's, let's get rid of it. Hoban did? Yeah, okay, dude. Like, they... they that was after the bandits dropped. You think they looked at Hoban's deck list for YCS Philadelphia and went like, dude, add the Cyberstein to the list. Add it to the list. We have everything ready, but add the damn Cyberstein. Patrick Hoban is playing Cyberstein. Quick, quick. God damn. I just want to know, I just want to know uh, whoever, whoever decided that circular should be on here. I just want to know, I just want to know the person responsible for that. I just want to talk. <laughs> Alright, what else is there to talk about? Um, Naturia Sacred Tree is a very good hit. Which is actually a runic hit. Like, this is actually a runic hit. Because Naturia Sacred Tree is, like, only completely busted in Naturia runic. In other, in other Naturia versions, which do, don't even exist right now, to, let's be real. But theoretically, like, Naturia Sacred Tree is only busted because of, like, discarding it for runic. They watched your stream, no hits to Sprite and Runic, but ban circuit, but hit circular. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Alright, Cash Tira hits. Um I've already said that I love the banning of Dio Diablosis. Banning Diablosis, I think, is a bigger deal than you think it is, even though the card doesn't come down in, in games that often. Um, like there's a lot of people that decide that they don't want to make the mind hacker, right? Like, a lot of people are going for the Arise Hard Pass to play around, um, like, uh, Nibiru and whatnot. Like, it's an ever-changing metagame, it, or it was an ever-changing metagame in what people would do on their first turn. Some people made Diablosis, some people didn't. Sometimes it mattered, sometimes it didn't. Um, I think what this does, it has a much bigger effect on deck building than it has on actual games. I, And what I mean by that is that from my perspective, as an example, when I'm building a deck for a tournament, uh, I have to think about what I will have to deal with, right? And when it came to Cash Tira, it was very difficult to decide how you were going to approach the matchup because you didn't know exactly which line they were going to take and how exactly you could deal with it, right? Because theoretically, cards like, uh, cards like um, Talents... Uh, evenly matched, uh, change of heart even, uh, other, like, Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon, all those cards were really, really strong against Kashtira, but you never knew 
if if your opponent would maybe go for like locking your entire back row, right? And then you could not use any of those cards. The fact that now you can eliminate that option from your from your from the possibilities basically opens up deck building a lot. Like you can play those cards and you can be sure that they do something, right? If Kashira goes first and I have change of heart, I am taking your Arise Heart. It is now mine, right? I mean, unless Forbidden Lands, but generally, right? Barring any other non-engine cards, right? If I if I have evenly matched, I am matching you even evenly. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? It it just works, right? You can prepare for that. And also, you don't have to play freaking multiples of every every sick freaking uh extra deck monster anymore that's uh that's uh that's necessary right you can play one zeus again you can play one of that one of that it's fine we can actually build our extra decks normally now um and also you can also prepare for things like ibli now because let me tell you preparing for nightmare ibli was a freaking pain in the ass because you couldn't just do one Lingaribo, you had to do two. Which was freaking annoying. So if your deck can spare one slot for, Ib for an Ibli out, you can now do it. You can do it. And that's cool. Um, other than that, one Arise Heart is honestly, I think, not the greatest hit, but I understand it. It's, a, it's okay. I just think that they could... Could have done a little bit better here on the Arise Heart. Like, you can still play the deck with one Arise Heart, and for the most part, the Arise Heart matters the most on turn one. And there's also a lot of ways on how you can recycle the Arise Heart, even if you get rid of it. Like, if you kill the Arise Heart, they can bring it back with birth and whatnot. So I, I'm not too sure if I love the one Arise Heart change. Um, but, yeah. It also, oh, birth is, oh, birth is non-XYZ. Ooh. I didn't actually, I didn't even know that. I haven't played a single match with Kash Tira in a tournament. I didn't know that. I didn't realize. Okay, never mind. Take that back. That's then, that, then it's good. Then it's a good hit. Never mind. Scratch what I just said. I was chatting. I was actually, I was one of you. I was a chatter. If you can't revive this thing with birth, I mean prep. Okay, prep can. I know prep. I know prep can do that. Um, but that's big. Only from banished. That is also like hard to do, right? Getting your rice heart banished is not easy, because it's like when they when they let's say they kill it with like Kurikara or some shit, it goes to the graveyard, and then how do you get it banished? You have to, like, scare clock banish it or something. Yeah, it's like... Okay, I actually like that. I like that hit. I like that hit. If you... If you get rid of their first Arise Heart, you might not actually die on the next turn. <laughs> you can actually survive. I like that. Good hit. Okay. Uh, and then we have... We have, like... We have Kashira Unicorn at 2, which is... Uh, as much as I think Unicorn... Is... Let's say let's say I don't I don't like consistency hits, right? I've said it before, but I think Unicorn is is okay at two. Like Unicorn, that card is too strong. I'm glad they didn't limit Fenrir. That's the one thing I'm glad about. We've talked about this a bunch in the past. I've set I've set my opinion on that. I've spoken my piece on on Fenrir, why I like Fenrir uh in the game. Not in Cash Tira specifically, but in like I like Fenrir as a card. Uh and I'm happy about the fact that they did not limit it. So, I like that. I will say, Unicorn seems very toxic in the mirror match now. I feel like Unicorn is kind of toxic in the mirror match because you banish your opponent's Arise Heart and freaking GG's, right? Ayo Tygantic, thank you for the 12 gift subs. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. You know what? For all the support we've gotten, Screw the sub goal. You can just have it. <laughs> you can just have it. 
There you go. This one's for you, Tygantic, and everyone else who's been supporting over the weekend. We've we've definitely hit some sub goals over the weekend that I didn't pay attention to because I was focused on the game. So there you go. All right. Uh, other than that, two starters is. I think I think I mean I'm 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 looking at this list and it's funny because, literally, my deck from YCS London, which was a runic sprite deck. It was a runic sprite deck, and it is still completely legal. I played two fountains and I played one starter. And they semi-limited fountain and semi-limited starter. <laughs> I think it's funny. Uh, I think it's funny. And uh, yeah, okay. So I, I think, uh, I think sprite starter is a significant hit for uh pure sprite decks, right? Like for decks that are not runic sprite, I do think start a starter hit does matter. Like starter, like for example, in master duel. We would always play three starter in the in all the sprite decks, right? I mean, every pure sprite deck ever would play three starters. How do you do at YCS London? I got top thirty two with the uh, runic life twin sprites. Um, so I think sprite variations will definitely be fine in this upcoming format. Whether they are the best deck or not is something that remains to be seen. Because honestly, a rise heart is still a big deal for runic decks, but now that they cannot possibly lock your, your shit anymore, and they also can't uh, look at your extra deck anymore, you can probably build your deck a lot better against it. Isn't it on theme to put every sprite card to two? That's, that's fair enough. Good point. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's because runic decks stop topping post Sayak. I mean, honestly... If you look at it from just a like game design or game balancing type of aspect and looking at top decks right now, runic decks are nowhere, right? I mean, you look at this, runic is not here, right? It's just not here. So I can understand why they didn't hit runic hard, right? Like I I get I get I can get behind it. I don't think it would have been warranted to completely blast Runic. Um, I think one kind of misjudgment that they may have made, and I say this even as a Runic enjoyer, I think they maybe underestimated Runic and maybe should have hit it harder, because I, from my perspective, the the only the single reason, the single single reason why Runic is not topping anymore is or was super heavy samurai literally that's it that's the reason why you don't want to you didn't want to play runic at a tournament is because super heavy samurai if they go first just kill you because runic is not a hand trap deck runic can't be a hand trap deck you cannot do it you cannot build a consistent runic deck with enough hand traps to stop super heavy samurai so Super Heavy Samurai was completely gatekeeping Runic. It was the reason why Runic was not being played or not performing, right? Wasn't it also because of Droll? No, Droll is not that big of a deal for Runic because Runic can usually uh, Runic can usually search Fountain in draw phase and then draw first action, or they can draw on your turn. Droll and Lockbird is not that bad for Runic, um, but. I think that is that might have been a little slip up, which honestly I don't mind because it makes Runic playable. But I think Runic was underestimated here, because I think if you if you hit Super Heavy Samurai as hard as they did by banning the Link One, um, I think Runic is gonna come back. I think Runic 
um, is going to be a strong contender. And with, with um, Naturia's Sacred Tree limited, I think the premier runic version is going to be some runic sprite again, which is pretty pog. I'm happy about that. Well, let's go. Uh, I feel like the only other thing to talk about really here is Sky Striker. Remind me really quick, chat. How many Kagaris do we have? Is it three? Three. Okay. Now... <laughs> Sky Striker, huh? Sky Striker, huh? I saw something this morning that I thought was funny. Look, I looked at... I was like... We could maybe look at some of these crazy developments on, on the Yu-Gi-Oh! market. Like, look at... Oh, look at this. Where's the other one? Where's... Uh, oh, yeah. Linkage. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. People are... People are coping on Sky Striker. Also, people are coping on Denglong. <laughs> Bro, look at this. This is so funny to me. Man. Literally, this is like the top 10 best sellers. It has one, two, three, four, five Sky Striker cards in the top 10. And literally, Multi Roll is there twice. <laughs> Multi Roll is there from Magnificent Mavens. And Multi Roll is here from Dark Saviors. <laughs> Multi Roll just made it into the top 10 twice of the best sellers on card market. I think there's like, I've never seen this before where like the same card was on there twice. Uh, I don't know what, how I feel about that, honestly. I really don't know how I feel about that. I don't think that pure Sky Striker, in all seriousness, uh, I don't think is that great. How do you pronounce Widow Anchor in German? Uh, it's Witwenanke. Pac made a tier list if you want to see it. Should we react to that? Should we react to Pac's tier list? Hold up. I want to do my own tomorrow. Well, we can watch it and see what they have to say. Let me finish my talk and then we'll react to it because we are almost done. So Sky Striker, I'm not sure uh, if it can keep up. I've said this before. I think Sky Striker in itself literally could have everything unlimited. Uh, which how is is Widow Anchor still at? Is Widow Anchor at two or is, was that Master Duel three? Yeah, Hornet is at one. I'll say one thing. I'll tell you one thing. You might not like to hear it, but Hornet Drones is not a Sky Striker card. <laughs> Hornet Drones does not count as a Sky Striker card, chat. Hornet Drones has been at its best in any other deck, but not Sky Striker, dude. That card is not a Striker card. Hornet Drones is literally your worst starter card in Sky Striker. You rather have Ray, you rather have Rose, you probably even rather have Linkage. Hornet Drones is not very good. For Sky Striker, it doesn't matter. Sky Striker, I honestly, I think Sky Striker might not even play the one Hornet Drones. Like, maybe you do. Maybe you play the one as a search option, but for the most part, you might not actually play it. You might not actually play Hornet Drones. It doesn't use Normal Summon, Rose does. And so what? You, re you realize that when you have a Normal Summon, you can Special Summon Rose, right? And if you don't have a normal summon, it doesn't matter that it takes up your normal summon. You realize that what you just said makes no sense, right? Like, if I have a normal summon, that's Ray. I can just special Rose if I want to. And uh, if I don't have a normal summon, I can just normal summon Rose and it doesn't matter. So, like, I don't know what, you, I don't know what you're saying. Uh, Ripton and Targazok, thank you for the subs. Appreciate you guys. Um, and then the only other thing that I'm wondering is whether this was smart. I am not sure if this was a smart decision, chat. Uh, because I don't remember ever seeing Denglong first of the Yang Zing in a healthy environment. 
as much as I think Benglong is kind of a cool card, I'm I'm kind of terrified by this because I just simply don't want this card to be good, right? Like the thing is, maybe maybe it won't see play, right? Maybe it won't see play, and maybe there won't be a toxic synchro deck with this. But honestly, think about it this way. If that is the best case scenario, right? The best case scenario, the best outcome possible. The best outcome possible here is that this card is not good. And I think if the, whenever that's the case, whenever that's the case, I think you can safely say they shouldn't have done that, right? Like, it's like, it was kind of, yeah, it was exactly the same like when they unbanned Cyberstein. Like, dude, why? Why did, what did you think was going to happen? What did you think people were going to do with Cyberstein? Like, really, you look at them and you're like, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> like, bro, like, nah. It was either not going to see play or going to be a problem. Those are the only two outcomes. And in that case, just don't, don't do it. Just don't do it. Why, why are we going to, like, why, why, why do we have to go about this? Like, why does it have to be this way? You know, like, if, if Deng Long sees play, it's going to be some stupid deck that's gonna set up infinite omni negates and play like on their turn for 10 minutes it's not gonna be great i don't like i don't like uh, i don't like ding long i'll be honest this is i think the worst change on the ban list ding long is fine stop whining i'm literally not whining i'm just concerned for the health of the game and if you don't understand why then you just didn't listen or did not comprehend what I just said. Tension Duelist! Guys, the TCG um, Forbidden and Limited list has finally been updated. So uh, I'm gonna do a proper review. I was at the wisest when this list dropped, and to be this quite is honest, not a tier list so though. For the wisest that this is not the tier list you were talking about. What? Which one are you talking about? It was on stream. Oh, does someone have the timestamp? His last vod at one hour thirty. Okay, hold up. Let me. Let me quickly search that. Oh yeah, while we while we wait, I was supposed to tell you there's a Sleeve Chief restock this Sunday at 8 p.m. They're gonna restock all their good OCG, uh, all the good OCG stuff, and you can get five percent off with Josh Five. I was supposed to tell you guys that. Much love to Sleeve Chief over the for the support over the weekend as well. They were here. They were watching. And they have a restock this Sunday, so uh, exclamation mark sleeves, and uh, yeah, check them out. Now back to this, okay, where is this? New ban list reaction. No. Was it the goo cast one? Twenty PM. Oh yeah, they have I don't think they've I don't think they've uh, mastered the time zones yet. <laughs> Hold up. Uh... Hmm. It, first, we have Marincis. Um, Honestly, I think the Zek is like an okay so it's like an okay deck i i put it like on c tier in terms of power level it's a consistent doesn't every time a bunch of hand traps you know it's all right uh we have ditron i think with orange like the two uh the deck will still get a little bit stronger but honestly i don't really like it like i, I think it's like it's like another one of those combo decks but if people stop playing hand traps maybe it can make like the FTK, ftk board but i think a lot of people will switch to board breakers like dark ruler and storm and all that good stuff so i don't see it being like uh, that strong i'll probably put it in the c tier <coughs> i think rogue for me is gonna be in the c and d tier Brother in Christ, where do I get that hoodie? Where do I get...
What is that scapegoat hoodie? I need that. Optimal? Ooh. Um, but now we're going to have, like, the lady, uh, Labyrinth. So, I, sh I should just restart this. Hold on. Wait, that's Gage's about, brand? Like, what, um... Ooh, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a need to hit... I'm gonna need to hit up my, my best friend, uh... My best friend, Gage, who has the best takes on, uh, magical hats ever. And is never wrong. I need to hit, I need to talk to my, my best friend, Gage, about something. Ooh. Like, what, what, what these two means? Maybe this will be, like... Next, we have uh, Kestira. I think Kestira is still a very, very good deck. I would put it at, <coughs> excuse me, at tier 1.5, closer to tier 1, to be honest, because I think the deck is actually still playable. And I mean, it's definitely it doesn't, playable. It lost the Ablosis, but Magic Cosmos is still, like, a really broken ability. And if they switch strategies to playing, like, preparations, uh, maybe even multiple preparations, um, I think this deck still has a really strong guy game and can, you know, still be, like, a top contender of the next format. Um, yes, it can't lock 5 anymore, um, but it still has access to one of the, it's one of the decks that access to one of the most non-agents in the game as well, so it can adapt easily to the format. And you skipped like Lab? Very, very well, I mean, Lab tier 1, I can just get behind. The deck didn't get hit. Like, Labyrinth, we don't have to really talk about Labyrinth, because the deck was a top tier deck. Or very solid before the ban list, and it didn't get hit. So, yes, it's still powerful. The only question is that, with, uh, with Labyrinth being, I feel like it's gonna be more in the spotlight now, because it was one of the decks that didn't get hit, and if people really prepare for it, maybe it gets a little bit weaker. Tech card that has access to, um, play. Uh, we have Dark Worlds, you know, like the hand loop. Uh, this deck has never been that good, it's like a hard combo deck. You know, maybe people play Joel again, but if people don't play hand traps, then maybe, like, the hand loop version can be very, very strong. I'll put that tier too, because, like, realistically, if the format changes to where people play Breakers and no, no hand traps, then the Dark, the, the Dark Worlds stuff can, like, really pop off. But I think a lot of people play Bistials for, like, uh, Labyrinth and Striker, Striker, so, like, I think this deck won't be as powerful, in my opinion. <coughs> Uh, Fluid Reese, I think it's a tier two strategy. Um, it honestly kind of depends on the format, but if Striker's in the format and Striker's really, really strong, I would put uh, Fluid in like tier two. Um, uh, I, I would, I would typically put it in tier one and a half, but personally, I would say tier two right now, only because uh, of the fact that Striker uh, with Widow Anchors and stuff really makes the Fluid has a really, really hard time. Uh, Draco Slayer is tier two in my opinion. I think with Draco Face Off coming off the list, um, not only that, Draco Slayer has been a really strong combo deck, um, and you know with Super Heavy kind of gone, there's also like a Super Heavy slash uh, Draco. Wait, but Draco Slayer like the new Draco Slayer deck didn't even use Face Off, did it? Like, was, was Face-Off even that great? I guess maybe now you do. Maybe it just wasn't worth it with one, right? With one, it wasn't worth it to play the Drake Overlord or whatever it's called, right? You needed to play that vanilla dude. I guess with three, maybe you can, right? You can, like, s s play three Face-Off, one vanilla or something. Slayer combo deck as well, so I honestly think this deck uh, is possible to be, like, tier two and still strong. Uh, I would put Mavic at tier 1.5, uh, and the reason why I put this as a very strong contender so for the metagame is because nah. triple mining, uh, triple uh, uh, small world, as well as the firewall package and the spirit package, the deck will still act as, act as circular the majority of the time. Um, just true. don't let Joshua see this, uh, but I would say for the majority of the time, like, the deck nah, is still a lot. Don't it's tell still very, very strong. It acts as circular almost every single way, so. Uh, Mana Dome. I think Mana Dome is actually a sleeper deck in the format, uh, mainly because I think that before, historically... Okay, so... Yes. Math Mech is not unplayable, I don't think. As much as I hate to say it, as much as it pains me to say it, I don't think Mathmic is unplayable. I think there are two very big reasons why I'm not that afraid of it anymore. First of all, um, if you don't open circular, your deck basically always loses to Ash Blossom, right? Like, circular was so obnoxious because if you drew circular you would not lose to most hand traps, right? Like, you, one circular would play through most hand traps because it was just that good, right? Um, the cards that search circular do, though, right? If you have to go for a rank 4 to find circular, that loses to Imperm, Veiler, whatever. If you have to sign at mining for circular, first of all, that's a minus 1. Um, that's going to lose to Ash Blossom. If you um, if you have to include all those searchers in your deck, your deck still gets worse overall, right? I mean, uh, they they played Cyanide Mining and and Small World to some capacity beforehand, but sometimes they also didn't. Also, another thing is that um, sometimes, like if people focus on something like using Bist Deals against Mathmex, sometimes the a, a big problem was not actually the first circular, but rather the follow up one. Like, for example, in my YCS London Top Cut match, I lost because they top decked the circular on turn two, which I don't think would have been possible if it was at one. Um, 
I just think the deck be the deck gets both less consistent and more susceptible to hand traps, which is a very good thing for it. And I don't think that I really don't think that it's going to be as good as it was. I I think tier 1.5 is too high, and I say that for the reasons I just stated, not because I don't like it. Like this is actually I I don't think this is a a statement fueled by hate. I feel like the points I just made were reasonable. I th those are the reasons why I would not play Mathmech right now is because um Yes, technically, you can still play cards that get you to circular, but all the cards that do get you to circular are a lot more susceptible to hand traps. Uh, or also, going second, your opponent has to, has to, ha is going to have some sort of interruptions, and, like, circular is not as weak to interruptions as all those other cards. You know, it's not as easy to go to a rank 4 to search uh, circular when you go second, right? It doesn't even work against most things, right? And so I think uh, I think that's uh, a big deal for for Mathmic. It's not always only about like the number of how many copies you can play, right? Oh, I went from we could play nine cards that are circular to seven or whatever. It's not only about that. It has some other implications. Uh, the format that we just came out of, Mad couldn't really compete because there's so many good uh, one card combo decks that could, could be played. Um, but oh, uh, if this is Pure Scare Claw, then I'll put this at tier, tier two. Uh, maybe tier three, to be honest. But uh, it's just that the fact that it's really that good, to be honest. And, like, I'll, I'll put it at tier three. So Pure Scare Claw tier three. But I'll put Mad at like uh, 1.5 to two, um, probably. Um, we all have the Lilith Shabbat deck. Uh, I would say that's a tier two deck. Uh, I think for that deck to be really, really good, you have to kind of pair with Sprite, uh, which you kind of see right here. Like, Sprite, Shabbat is so very strong. Um, you know, that was a deck that was really strong in the 250th. Uh, but I think the Lilith version is like not bad as well. Um, it can search like DD Crow and like uh, it can also like end on F0 and a bunch of all that. Low key, does the third uh does the third recital starling even do much? I don't think it does, right? I don't think the third recital starling is like a big deal. I feel like I feel like before the ban list, if you could make two of that thing, you were already winning. Or as good as it gets, right? And I don't think the third one is that big of a deal. It's a follow-up play. I can see that. I can see that it could be a, an important follow-up play, but honestly, I feel like that's, like, one of the deck's minor issues. Like, it's not really the biggest issue for Lyrilla's Tri Brigade that it doesn't have follow-up. I don't think that's the problem. Like, it's tough. So, uh, if that's good in the format, then I think this could be kind of nice. Virtual World Tier 2, the deck is uh, honestly kind of powercraft. Um, and I wouldn't say it's, like, that strong, but like, it might be a good meta call to, like, Combat Striker, uh, maybe Combat Labyrinth, because, like, a lot of its engine is really, really strong. Uh, I think Dragon is Tier 1. Um, Dragon Link's tier one, to be honest. Ooh. I think like um, uh, Dragon is one of those decks that has, over time and time again has always been a relevant deck. And I think with the Rise Heart and then Kestira maybe not being as popular. Fair point. Fair point. I haven't thought of Dragons as one of the big like winners of this ban list, but that is yeah, Dragons, bestial control type of stuff. Uh, I'm down. Is it finally time to play Branded Regained, dude? Oh, I hope it's time to play Branded Regained. Then the Dragon Link deck uh, is very, very good. Uh, a lot of decks can't even out Borland. It has a really good grind game. This was a really, really powerful into Striker, into Labyrinth. Um, so I think, and, and Seal Pass is still like, really, really powerful, surprisingly. So, Elish, tier 3, to be honest, it's just worse Labyrinth. Don't play this, please. Yeah. Ninja, unplayable. Uh, don't yep. do not play that deck. It's literally unplayable. Now, Plunder is a very interesting one. Bro, Ninja. Plunder is very interesting. I think Plunder could actually. Ninja is still one of the most genius PR stunts in, uh, in 2023. <laughs> Jesse really just said, hey, I don't care about this 3v3 YCS. Let me just bring the most content deck I can think of. <laughs> that should be kind of clean. Um, and I say this because it has access to the right engine, which is very, very strong. Ninja uh, has a ton of fun, though. I mean, dodge. fair, right? But we're talking competitive tier lists. So, like, it's not ranking decks by how fun they are. But, yeah, Jesse was content brain for that one. Um, a lot of interruptions, like hand traps really easily. Like, um, it can dodge like Widowmakers really well. Uh, Plunder... Does he include Plunder Runic as its own thingy, or is this... Because if this is Plunder Runic, I disagree. I think Plunder Runic is better than all these other decks. Like, I, I seriously tested Plunder Runic before the ban list, and I thought that deck was not bad. Like, it's not... I don't think it's insane. I don't think it's, like, tier zero or some shit, but Plunder Runic was... was solid. Like, that was a solid deck. And I think it still is. Plunder is really, really good into, like, um, outing back row because it has access to, like, uh, the fire ship. <coughs> um, and with Jord, I think Plunder can actually be kind of nice, like, locking people with Warlords. I actually think Plunder is a really strong option. Like, I actually, like, if I play against Plunder, like, it's a deck that I'm, like, definitely uh, scared of. Like, I think it's a good deck. <clears throat> I think Pearly going second is, like, tier 1.5. Like, it's actually very, very strong. It's just as like, going first, but I think if you play go second Pearly um, and just try to, like, break apart boards, just rip them apart, I think Pearly is really, really strong. That's so, very strong going second, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah.
Should I take uh, Alsace here too? Uh, I, I, that is, I, I, I can, I can get behind that impression on purely. It's like going first. I don't really see how you're gonna make it consistent. I really don't see it. Plump. Like I said, I underestimated uh, the fact that Delicious Memory is the one that mentions Plump. That feels like it's it's a very drastic hit for now. Maybe it gets better when we get the new XYZ. But going first, uh, purely, I can't really see working. Blind second, though? Maybe. Right? Blind second. The cool thing about purely is that if you do end up, like, one big problem of, 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 of going second decks usually is that when people, once people know what you're doing, right, either in game two or three or because you're playing a long tournament and they've seen you before or they've, they know what you're playing because you've played against one of their friends or you've had a feature match or whatever, right, in long tournaments this matters. When people know what you're doing with a go second deck, they will usually make you go first. The thing about purely is that even though it's not as consistent going first, even if they even if they let you go first, you still have a chance to find your delicious memory, right? You still can make uh, a noir. You could theoretically still do some of those things. Worst case, when they make you start and you could still be fine, right? Just make Fucho going first, and then you're still a go second deck. Or something like that, right? Um, Traptrix had an advantage where because, because its best matchup was Kestira. But because Kestira isn't as strong anymore, I would, I would also leave this as like tier 2-ish, to be honest. Sprite Runic, I think this is going to be one of the best decks in the format. It was really, really strong uh, before. Oh, hell yeah. The Vanless, um, or uh, like in, in the 250th format. So I would say that like, uh, like Sprite Runic is going to be tier 1. Uh, it's literally hell more yeah. hand traps. You can't really use Warbreakers to beat it because you have access to like runic cards as well. So like the fact that it's like very diverse in its interruptions, having cards in hand for like runic cards, having on-field presence um, with you know sprite cards, and even having back row presence with like a starter and smasher makes it a very threatening deck for the upcoming format. Uh, you have Mechanko, uh Brave. I would say this is tier two. I actually tested much of this deck. Um, it's like a sixty card base pile. This deck actually did really well. That was recently. Um, and it's definitely something for us to look uh, more into for sure. Honestly, Rika's and Avalon. I think tier one point five. This deck is actually scary. Uh, it didn't get touched at all. It's a Rika very, very strong good. deck when it goes first. Like Rika really is absolutely goals. good. I uh, think people like, are still cross, underestimating um, Rika. So I actually think this deck can be very, very clean, to be honest. And like the, the combo is very powerful. And like you know the full regular combo with Rika Sheet and Con Con. Um, you, you know it's, it's just like really, really good. I actually do think this is nice. I think it's good. Rudy Noteria is I think tier one point five. You could try it with the Shizu package, milling five cards, using the shufflers for a cycle of the tree. Um, but I honestly think it's like tier two to be honest. It's like the Rudy I don't agree with 5. that. I don't agree with that. I think the deck f without tree or with one tree, it just doesn't feel as unfair, right? It's like you need to draw a tuner and a runic, and then you're doing what you're doing. But honestly, one tree just... I don't know, dude. One tree is... I don't, I don't agree with this. I think, I think that's uh, like... Yeah. You're rating your pet so, so deck a little bit higher. Um, Same as this, because, dude. Um, it's just like one, of the, like the, it's one of those decks, like, like, like Sprite. Time over time again, it's just randomly insane. And the deck has a lot of room for non-engine to play tactics, um, to play like thrust, all that good stuff. So, uh. <coughs> it's very, very good in my opinion. Um... And the deck is like literally, uh, it's like reprint to Oblivion. It's it's good. It has a lot of access to um a lot of like its engine. Like like I think Sorcerer can actually just kill you. Like it's very very scary. It's very it's pretty much up there. Um, this is a uh, tier. I think tier is one point five. I think the tier limit deck with the Shizu, even with all the names at one, is actually tier one point five because without a Rise Heart being as popular, I think the tier engine is actually very strong right now. Uh, with like you know you play like King of the Swamp, you play like uh, Guardian Chimera, uh you, you know you play like all the Millers, uh you know you play like Triple Sullyek, you play like uh, a triple tier cash with with um you play the Shadow package, you get access to windows, you get draws. I actually genuinely think that the tier deck is actually insane right now. It can break through a lot of boards. <coughs> Punk Gold Pride. I think it's, it's one of the better combo decks mm. in the format. No one's really going to be main decking Niv because Striker and Labyrinth are in the format. So the Punk deck can actually go full combo. Um, and and I think uh, the Punk deck, uh, Gold Pride deck, when it goes full combos, makes an unbreakable board. Like, you actually cannot beat it. And it's like it's Punisher is unoutable uh, when you do that. You go to like 3,000 life points. And so I actually think Punk Gold Pride is actually insane. Uh, Sprite, uh, you have Sprite, um, the Sprite Melfi deck, I think it's tier 1.5. I don't think it's the strongest Sprite Runic, but uh, the, the, you know, the Penny version, the Melfi version is still very, very strong. Runic for higher, I would put it at tier 1 as well. Um, mainly because the Furhai engine is very, very strong. Uh, it's like, it's, I'm talking about like Runic Furhai Sprite, like the Dinka the, the, the list, the Dinka Bui list. I would put it on the same power level as Runic Sprite. Very, very sure. Very, very good. Um, like you draw way too many cards, like you're literally like getting all grinded to into Oblivion. You have uh, Sprite Life Twin. Uh, I would put this in the same power level as Sprite Melfi, to be honest, but a little bit worse, because yeah. I think the Melfi engine is stronger. <clears throat> Salmon Great, unplayable. Do not play that. Strike Striker tier 1. <laughs> I know it's like weird, but like. I think Hell it's nah. Mainly because it has typically an even matchup into like everything, and it's a very like uh, it's an even deck. Like it'll go even with every deck. Like, you don't know what to I mean, I will. We will try it a little bit, I guess. We will think about it in a little bit on how you could even build this deck. But I, I don't know about this one, Chief. I don't know. The thing is, like, how are you gonna approach Sky Striker? Like, how are you gonna do it? Are you gonna make it a hand trap deck? The problem with that is, you hand trap your opponent. So to stop them from playing when they go first, and then what do you do going second? What do you do? What is your punish? Resolve, engage? 
maybe twice. Like you're you're just like always giving them more and more turns. I don't know. Play you just, you just play this. You know what I'm saying? Linkage OTK like, is not gonna work. Like, it's like decent everything. You never like have a bad match per se. You just like you go even against everything. Like uh, yeah, engage, engage, engage with the five. People don't realize thrust is like absurd. Thrust is actually absurd. Like thrust is literally absurd. Maybe I'm underestimating like, I think it. To really be fair. I think, you really know what? Good. Does that make sense? You know what? Probably where the truth lies here is that I'm I think I'm underestimating it and I think Pac is overestimating it. So I would probably put it alongside these decks in tier two. He's putting it in tier one. The reality of things might be with a with the right build for the format, maybe it's somewhere here in the middle between these other decks. Because like one thing that I think Sky Striker does have going for it is that it's it's very adaptable to the format. Like theoretically, but I don't I really don't think it's gonna be I really don't think it's gonna be tier one. I, and if you look at my tier list, you see why the format's kind of annoying. Because there's so many decks in tier one and tier one point five. I like, think yeah, but that's because you're overestimating it. <laughs> I think give this some time and people are quickly gonna figure out which of these decks are actually good. Right? It's just like I think that's why I think that's why this ban list is so good is because it theoretically there's a lot of decks that could be good but I think after a while after you try and figure out and test stuff you're going to figure out that Mathmech is not here like Mathmech is not there uh like it's actually I don't think Sprite Tri Brigade is up here I don't think Lyralusk Tri Brigade or whatever that is is up here uh you know like I think there's going to be some some true filtering going on with these decks. I don't think they are actually as viable as you think they are. Foul. Like, I think tier 1.5 is like decks that aren't like on the same level as tier 1, but like they're still very viable. Like if you play against these decks, you have to be afraid. I think Super Heavy is tier 2. It's way more fragile now, um, but it's like decent. Mana Dome, I would say 1.5. Um, and the reason why I say Mana Dome is tier 1.5 is because Mana Dome uh, was very weak last format uh, because of all the decks prevalent. Because a lot of decks are weaker, the Mana Dome deck, I think is way more stronger now. And it's just the counter trap. So if people play Dark Ruler like that, it has outside Dark Ruler while maintaining a really big board presence. So I, I like the fact that the in engine can search Dark like a, a solemn judgment. <coughs> uh, Brandon tier one, I think. I, I maybe tier one point five or tier one. Like, I don't know. I think Brandon's like, very strong. Um, I'm never, I'm never throwing Brandon in tier one again. <laughs> I'm never making that mistake again because it is a, it's the opposite of a self fulfilling prophecy. Putting Brandon into tier one will never be true because if people think Brandon is tier one, it'll automatically not be a tier one. That's just the branded, you know, the branded destiny is just like you can never actually be the best deck in the format and then also perform <laughs> it's just it doesn't do that branded doesn't do that because as soon as people think branded is tier one people just literally hate on branded as much as they can uh play ash play d barrier play anti-spell and then branded just falls off so i'm just gonna i'm spoiler for tomorrow i'm gonna throw branded as a solid tier 1.5 that's where it should be. That's the highest it can ever be. We just stopped talking about it. The brand that paradox. Exactly. I'm a I'm a I'm a write a thesis on that. Brand is gonna be really strong only because uh like the deck is still very like if you're putting results brand fusion, even if they don't puppet lock you, they still make a like a really good board. You know what I'm saying? Like yes, they might not puppet lock you. Let's say they don't puppet lock you. The board they make is still very annoying and their grind game is ridiculous. They have like the most ridiculous one of the most ridiculous grind game in the game. So, you know, that's something to concern. Dinos, I tested the dino cards, the new ones are coming out. I think it's like tier two, maybe tier three, it's like not that good in my opinion. Uh, the Nobelis, like, I didn't test yet, so I don't know where to put it. So nah, put it dude, don't put it. <laughs> I think Bacchus Soul is a tier 2 deck as well. It has a lot of good potential for the future. It might get more support, and I think as a result, it might become strong again. Exorcist is tier 2. Um, I think it has consistency issues, but it's still a strong deck. <coughs> Spiral, unplayable. Uh, Conceller is tier 3, to be honest, not bad. Uh, this deck is like tier 3, and then Dytron is tier 3 as well. But I would say this is where we're at format wise. Um, we have Lab, Cash, that I think is still very, very good. Uh, Dragon Link is still very good. Runic Sprite is still good. Firehawk Runic is still good. Um, Striker is good. And all the tier 1.5 decks are basically what a deck I consider tier 1, to be honest. But like, they're not. Okay. I mean, for the most part, I think I agree with the, like, I agree with a lot of the things. I just think that the stuff is going to be a little bit more spread out. I don't think we're going to have, um, yeah. I think some of the stuff that he put in tier 1.5 is going to be lower than that. Um, and some of the stuff he put in tier 1 actually ends up being a little bit worse. And so on and so forth. Like, I would not call, like, 
Dinos, Hungry Burger, and Exo Sister and Tier 2 decks. I don't think they fit the definition of Tier 2 decks. I think those are rogue decks. Um, they are going to be lower than that. Like, there's definitely a difference between, like, Plunder Patrol and freaking uh, Exo Sisters. I don't know in what world Lurlask Try is considered anywhere near Tier 1. Yeah, some of these decks, I think, are just overestimated. Because, like... Sometimes, I, I do that too in my head sometimes. I remember decks how they were back then, and I'm like, maybe that's not that bad, but then you don't really, you don't realize that in comparison for to what decks do today, it's actually just not that impressive anymore. I mean, look, like a Lirla's Tri Brigade board used to be pretty cool, but Brother in Christ, uh, compared to what decks do now and compared to what decks can break these days, I don't think, yeah. What do you think Assault Synchron will do to the meta? I'm, I am beyond excited for Assault Synchron. I think Assault Synchron, at, with the, with, as the ban list is right now, Assault Synchron could be something. Like, I think if Bestial, like if, if, if Bestial Dragon Link is already a good deck now, which it honestly is looking to be, I think, uh, I think Assault Synchron could go right into that. I mean, we, we're not going to be able to make Chaos Ruler with it, but... You can still do other things with it. You can make like a assault uh, Stardust Synchron and, and Barone and stuff. And then, you know, it's cool. And, uh, or like this Potter stuff. And I think the fact that we don't have Max C in the TCG gives us, gives us so much more wiggle room when it comes to assault Synchron, right? It's just like, I think that is one of the main things that's holding back Synchro Piles in the OCG is that they all completely suck against Max C. And uh, in the TCG, we don't have that problem. And the decks are still seeing some play in the OCG, right? People are still doing Assault Synchron shenanigans. Even though they have Maxi, and we don't, so... But I do need... I do need a little bit of time to think about this. We're gonna make a tier list tomorrow of my first impression of decks. I'll think about what to include and whatnot. Uh, one thing we could do... One thing we could genuinely do is try to build some of those decks and see how they would look for this new format. Like, for example... I know, I know, probably the first thing that anyone did, but we can try and build some Sky Striker and because I don't even know how that deck would freaking look right now. I don't even know how you would play that deck. And then I, because I, I, I don't know. Because like, what do we do? So we have two of this now. We have two multi-rolls. Uh, we have three, but we don't play three ever. What the hell is this? Engage got an alternate art? I've never seen that before. Do we already have that? Coming soon? Okay. Uh, we definitely play some amount of linkage. We play some amount of rows. I don't know how many. We might play these guys. We probably play, like, a shark cannon. I don't know if we play the field... Like, I don't know about any of this. The hell are we doing with Sky Striker? We don't have Mystic Mine? Talents and Thrust, I guess. Runic Striker? Runic Striker. I don't really... I don't understand what we're trying to do. <laughs> like, really, I don't get it. What are we trying to do? How are we winning the game in 2023? What are we doing? I 
I'm not sure if we have a win condition. Linkage? I mean, okay. Hamp? I mean, actually, Hamp? Where's Hamp? Hamp could actually be okay if, if people are playing a Rise Hard and shit. Just hand trap spam? I don't know. Uh, look, the thing is, I'm looking at this and I'm just not scared of it. You know what I mean? I'm looking at this and I'm not scared of it. What hand traps are even good in this environment? Therion? Eh, we could play... We could play like a field spell package with the, the Area Zero and the Therion. Don't hate that. The thing is, the one thing I don't want to do, because I really don't see how it's going to work, I don't think Sky Striker should be a go second deck. I really don't think Sky Striker should be a blind second deck anymore. Because I think, like, when I'm trying, when I'm thinking of a going second deck, I want the deck to be good at going second, but Sky Striker cards are not good at going second. The only cards in going second Sky Striker that are good for going second are your board breakers, your non-engine. Actual Sky Striker cards are not good for going second. We want Shizuku Pass. Well, see, the thing is, that's what I'm not sure about is whether that works or not. I don't think it does, but. <laughs> this deck is from 2019. <laughs> you forgot Kaina? Oh, yeah. What else can the deck do going first? You know, the thing is, the deck also doesn't do anything going second, though. Right? The deck also doesn't do anything going second, because you break the board and then what? You break the board and then what? You can never... You can never consistently kill them going second. That's never gonna be a thing. You're always going to break their board and then you're going to try and set up your own board. But that's like, if your board going first is not enough, then your board that you make through their board when you go second is also not going to be enough. Like, no way.
Is there can be only one even good? I'm not sure. For God, Hornet Drones? Dude, I don't even know if you want to play Hornet Drones. That card kind of sucks. But maybe you still play it. Is there another hand trap we can play? That's looking to be good? Not sure. I mean, you could play Valor. I don't know. This, I don't... I don't think this is it, J Chad. Chat, this does nothing. No. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, dude. The sad thing is, and this is really why I don't think Sky Striker is viable. All of those hands, and that is what you need to understand, all of these hands would have been absolutely fine in 2019. Besides the fact that some of these cards weren't out yet. But like, if you draw a card, if you draw a hand like Terraforming Engage Rose in 2019 or something, your hand, you're, you're, you are happy, you're popping, right? But it's just not... Yu-Gi-Oh! has changed. Yu-Gi-Oh! has changed. Like, if I go first in 2019 and I do this... Right? If I do this in 2019... Right? I'm chilling. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Life is good if I do this. Right? Life is okay, but not in, in 2023, you are dead. <laughs> you don't, you don't, uh, you don't get another turn. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't, you're not going to stop me with an imperm and a, and a shark cannon. You're not doing that. That's not, that's not happening. Uh, and that's why I've been saying, that's why I've been saying they could give us three engages and I don't think it makes a difference. I don't think it makes a difference. Um, maybe, genuinely, genuinely, maybe the Runic Sky Striker deck could be something. But in that case, I think it's more about the Runics than the Sky Strikers. Because, like, I, th yeah, the, the Runic and the Sky Striker cards have some anti-synergy, too. Where, like, they both need the extra monster zone. But, I think, um... I think those could be okay. Like, uh, you can... You get to three spells for engage very easily. You also draw engage very consistently because you... Uh, you you draw cards with runics. Uh, you can use multi-roll to free your extra monster zone for, uh, for the runic spells. And then you can use linkage to get your, your runic fusions out of the extra monster zone, replace them with sky strikers. And it just gives you more removal, right? Like, you can, like, loop afterburners with Kagaris, uh, draw extra cards, break apart boards, Widow Anchors steal shit. So, I think that could be something. It's gonna be... It, it would be a very grindy deck. Um, but, yeah. It would play much more like... Chat, you're, you're envisioning it the wrong way, I think. Because you're thinking of a Sky Striker deck that adds runic cards. I'm thinking of it as a runic deck that just plays a couple Sky Striker cards for a grind game. 
right? To to force negates, to draw extra cards, to fill the graveyard, like stuff like that. Um, you wouldn't, you. I don't think you would even play Ray in that deck. They didn't play Ray like that in in Master Duel in Runic Sky Striker. I think the deck played no Ray. It was just engage linkage, multi roll, and some Sky Striker spells in Runic. In what world is that better than Sprite? Well, probably not. But I'm saying if you want to make Sky Striker work, I could see it that way. How do you do anything? Like your whole extra deck is full of bullshit. I mean, your win condition is probably deck out at that point. You're probably trying to out, like, kill all of your opponent's shit, right? You're trying to, I'm going to use the runic removal spells. I'm using the Sky Striker removal spells. I'm going to run you out of cards. I'm going to keep drawing cards with Fountain, Engage. I will recycle cards with Kagari, Multiroll. I will run you out of shit. I will take every single last card you have. I will banish some of your resources. And at some point, you'd if you grind your opponent out of cards, uh, if you grind your opponent out of cards, they can also never really top deck out of it because your grind game is insane, right? Like you recycle more interruptions than they draw new cards every turn. So you um, you can basically never lose once you hit to that point, right? It's a, it would be a very uh it would be a very how do you say in, uh, very non conventional win condition I think sounds like sprite runic to me sometimes sprite runic did the same thing right sometimes sprite runic literally took ages to win because you would focus on taking away their shit you didn't actually like kill them right you just like negated all their stuff every turn you recycled your negates and whatnot like elf revive red elf revive carrot and you can't top deck out of it. So you just outgrind them, right? And opponents just scoop once they know it's over, right? And so that's, I think, what a deck like that would also try to do. The only problem is that with Runix, you don't have a battle phase, so you can never a Hayate to find Engage. You'd have to draw Engage, or you'd have to, like, uh, Shizuku search it, with its, which, I don't know. I think Runic Striker is like all right, maybe. Uh, Antiquus Beef and Omni PT, thank you for the subs, especially Omni. Thank you for the eleven months. Appreciate that. But this chat, this is is dead. This is I I think this is dead. I, I, just by looking at this, I nah. It just doesn't work. What else is like an what else is an interesting deck that we could take a quick look at? Like what has what has yeah. They just printed a new Diablosis? What do you mean? Is there a new card to react to? Mr. Trevor, thank you for the 12 months, the full year. Appreciate you. Not on YG Orc yet? Oh, I was checking that in the background. Can you link it? Can you send it to me on the cord? So I can't find it. Just wait for YG Orc to post it? Okay. Okay. Runic Twin Sprite? I mean, chat. Do I still have my Runic Twin Sprite from London? I don't think I do, but I mean, look. 
uh i think you you can almost play the same deck you would play you would play different non-engine like but for the most part it stays the same deck uh So this is the minimum runic package, maybe more. Depending on how much room you have, you play more runics. And then... Uh, it was... Maybe this, this, hold on one. Hmm... You might not need this. I actually don't think you do, but maybe. I played one. What was my... I'm trying to rebuild my exact list. I think so far, this was all there. This, this. Uh, this. It was that. That. And uh, it was Alan's. I played one talents, I think. I'm missing one card. I played 16 runics, right? Oh, yeah. This was my list from London. And you can still play it exactly like this. The question is just whether you like these tech cards the most still. Uh, the question is, I think the runics, you still, you play the same ones. The sprite ratio can stay the same, honestly. Uh, and then it depends whether Kurikara is still the best one, whatever. And it also, it also depends what your end board wants. Because in, in, uh, in, in London, we tried to do, uh, we wanted to end on IP into Nightmare Griffin, right? Maybe you don't want to do that this format. I don't know. Uh, my extra deck was Unicorn. Uh, it was Abomination. It was Muckraker. And one more card. Oh yeah, Sprint. Like this. I mean, honestly, you can still play the exact list, really. You can do some optimizations, like the ratios. I don't know if the ratios on the twins was perfect. You can pl maybe play less. I don't know if you even need frost. Like, I didn't. I don't. I didn't feel like frost was necessary. Um, and if anything, I drew a little bit too many life twins than too little overall. So maybe you cut down on it a little bit. But that's, like, the deck still definitely works. And the same also goes for, I think, Dinka Bui's deck. Dinka Bui's deck also probably uh, still works exactly the same. The question is uh, if, the question is whether it's better than this deck or not. I'm not sure. I haven't actually played it. Sprite Synchro sounds really cool. How, what do you mean by that? Pretty sure you were on 17 runics? No, I definitely played this. Unless I only played one jet. That is possible. It's possible I only played one jet. If bestials become bigger, this is weaker, I guess. I mean, yeah, if Dragon Link... If, like, bestial control Dragon Link is, like, the number one deck... One jet? Okay, then I played two dispelling, right? Maybe. Maybe it was this. I don't know. What do you think about Dark Ruler and Runic Sprite? I think that card sucks in Runic Sprite. 
The reason why Dark Ruler sucks in Runic Sprite is you can't attack over their monsters. So if you negate all their shit, you still have to removal. You have to use removal on all of it. And I don't, uh, yeah. Anyways, I, I don't know how I would adjust this. I don't know how I would adjust this for the, for the upcoming format. I'd have to, I have, I'd have to look into it, but I'm like, I'm pretty certain that some version of Runic Sprite is going to be fine. Right? I think some version of Runic Sprite is going to be fine. You played two jet. I looked it up. That's what I thought. I thought it was two jet. I only, I think I played only one dispelling. I think it was this. Brother, you don't have to link me my own deck profile. <laughs> Yeah. Who's number one? It's number one, Infection Buzz King. Wait, has there never been a number one? Is this where they print number one? Did we really never have number one? Numeron Gate? Oh, right, the Numeron is number... But why is there another number one now? How are they going to make another number one? The gates are imposters? That makes sense. Okay. So this is the actual number one. Infection Buzz King. L uh, rank 8 Dark Fiend. Material 2 plus level 8 monsters. You can only use the first and second effects of this card. Name each once per turn. If this card is XYZ summoned, look and you get your opponent's extra deck and send the card from into the graveyard. Bro, you just banned Diablosis. You can detach one material from this card, then target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. Then if it was a face-up monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the attack it had on the field. Once per turn during your standby, you can attach one card from your opponent's graveyard to this card as material. Um, okay, <laughs> I don't know how to, uh, fair, I guess. I don't think this card is that strong. I mean, it's like, the thing is, Diablosis was also not a very good card until they made Kash Tira. So they, basically, they had to make, they had to make a deck that was specifically, it was basically a custom deck for Diablosis, right? And like... This one, while it is a generic level 8, I don't see a deck that really benefits from this. Right? I don't really see a deck that benefits from it. Plus, it's way less toxic than Diablosis. It's way less toxic than Diablosis because it sends to the graveyard. It doesn't banish face down. It doesn't also banish more cards from the top of their deck. Um, it's still not a bad card it's also a fiend so labyrinth can make it even when they're locked i don't know cut the vod this can be used for ftk nesh nesh ftks are not good i hate to break it to you but you can try and find as many ftks as you want ftks are not good ftks are not a good strategy Punk Bish can possibly FTK. Bro, it still loses when you go first. It has a 50% win rate. It doesn't top events. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It is not relevant. FTKs are not relevant in Yu-Gi-Oh. Simple as that. It's not a thing. I mean, also, it does half the damage. You'd have to inflict, like, it had to be, it would have to be 8,000, uh, 16,000 attack. Danger, Dark World? Dude, dangers are an exception to that. Dangers are an exception for that. Dangers don't count.
Or you use a second burn effect. I mean, look, maybe there's maybe they maybe you can do FTKs with this. You probably can. But real talk, FTKs are not what I'm worried about. I'm not worried about FTKs in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. Like it literally, there's like there's like a billion YouTube videos you can look up of one card FTK end on crazy shit. Like that stuff in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! It just does not really work. Um and it's it's never been a good strategy for years and years and years. The last time an FTK was good was Danger FTK. The only reason why Danger FTK was good was it was like literally dangers were more broken going second than they were going first. The two YCSs I topped with Danger FTK in both YCSs I lost way more dice rolls than I won, and um, it was only because of that that. Like, dangers would j were just insane when you went second, because you had six cards in hand, so the math on dangers was just infinitely better. You would just literally summon a bunch of big dangers and attack your opponent for a game. Penned FTK was just penned that ftk sometimes, yeah, and even in that format, some people didn't even ch choose to FTK, they played regular Pendulum. And we had as a thought, yes, as a thought was a big reason. <laughs> so I don't think uh, I don't think this is super relevant. I'll I'll go. I need to go to the toilet really quick. I'll be right back. All right, uh, there we go. Uh, I think it's funny. I think it is funny that uh, that they released this card like two days after or three days after they banned Diablosis in the TCG. Of course, the two things aren't connected because like Diablosis, I'm pretty sure, isn't even banned in the OCG and those are the ones that designed this card. So this is pure coincidence. I think it's funny though, but uh, I don't think this card is as good. Uh, Shadow of Malice, thank you so much for the Prime. Appreciate the support. Welcome to the stream. It is banned? No, is it not banned? In the, is it banned in the OCG? This will see play at some point though. I mean, yeah, I can see it. If there's ever a good rank 8 deck, but for some reason, I mean, rank 8s are just very hard to make, right? Rank 8 in general is just a hard number to get to, because, like, I mean, the same was true for level 7. The only reason why rank 7s are now viable is because Kashtira made it easy. Right?
8 is the second easiest after 4. That is major cap scrub. There's no way... There's no way 8 is the second easiest after 4. There's no way 8 is easier than 3 and 2. 3 and 2 are... Freaking easy. Punk can do it easy. I mean, let's be real here. Every for every level you will find like a one card combo that does it. I mean, but also it has to be a viable strategy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm pretty sure you can find a one card combo for any level that does that level rank. Like uh, a, an XYZ for that rank. You can find that everywhere, but you don't find it in like meta relevant stuff, right? Like in meta relevant stuff, there is no deck that can summon a rank eight, right? Not really. The closest is like the punk engine, right? The closest is the punk engine, I think. But for the most part, you know, Furions, yeah. But like, if you look at the decks that can make rank twos, well, it's only really Sprite, but that's like much more powerful. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Lab? Lab would use this card. Lab would use this card. I'll give you that. The question is, when we get this card, will Lab still be a thing? Dragon Link can too. Dragon Link will never, though. Dragon Link will never make this guy, I think. But, yeah. It's... Because I don't even know when we get this. It's probably months. Why make this when you can make Zombie Vampire? I mean, Zombie Vampire, Hope Harbinger. Like, there's probably better cards than this anyways. Because, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's like the Diablosis. You only really make Diablosis in, 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 what's it called? In Cash Tira because it synergizes with other stuff, right? If it was just for the extra deck effect, you wouldn't be making Diablosis at all. Congrats on making it. I watched a lot of the stream this weekend. It was some of the best Yu-Gi-Oh! content. I appreciate that. I'm glad you liked it, and thank you. Remove it from extra deck seems busted. You say this, but then no one played Diablosis for that reason. Right? Think about it. Diablosis was not played because it ripped from the extra deck. Diablosis was used because it had so much synergy with Kashira specifically. Right? You never made Diablosis like just for the sake of ripping from the extra deck. You made Diablosis because it triggered Shangri Era. It banished cards from your opponent's deck face down too, which triggered Shangri Era again. It was for that combo that you used Diablosis. You didn't actually care that much about the extra deck rip because everyone played the important cards as two of anyways. I feel like Diablosis is the inspiration for the whole Cash Tira archetype. I've heard that theory before that they tried to make Diablosis good and made Cash Tira for it. I'm not sure if it's true. I mean, it's I can see it because it literally feels like a custom archetype for Diablosis. But yeah. Uh, when is this in effect, by the way? Chat, when is this ban list in effect? Is it before this weekend's nationals? Fifth? Oh, that's so cringe. Really? Uh, which national is this year? Uh, this week? Which nationals is this weekend? Is it Italy or France? Italy. Bro, imagine. Imagine playing a national championship with this old ban list now oh my god that'd be so cringe that could never be me i feel a bad for i feel bad for for italy that's so boring 
Yeah. Oh, it is fifth. Oh, man. Well. Uh, it's also it's also bad for us because I would have really liked to have some more input before German nationals. And seeing the results of like a big national like Italy would have been very interesting, I guess. Uh, I have one more question about... Do I have a cash tira list here? I do. So you obviously have to cut the unicorn. The rest can theoretically stay the same. Theoretically. Um, you go down to one arise. You have to cut diablosis. But the more important question is... What is your... Uh... What is your combo? Oh yeah, you don't need two of those. Like, what is your going first board even? You probably do tr three rice hard, right? You probably actually do three rice hard because you, you need to like... If you don't have rice hard... Yeah, this feels so much weaker. It feels, this feels so much weaker. Of course, these cards are also going to be different depending on the metagame. Like, I'm pretty sure you're going to play Ash because people are going to play Branded. So, this feels like it's going to be your baseline deck list for Cash Tira, I guess. And the rest is 12 non-engine. So, the main deck doesn't change as much. Uh, the main deck doesn't change as much. The question is, what is your combo? Let's say you start Unicorn. Hold up. Let's say you start Unicorn. What do you even do? The Cash Rate Raptor deck played one Arise and no Diablosis. They knew. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. So you could just go. Let's say you have just Unicorn. We go Theosis. Fenrir at Rysard. Is it even worth it to make like Shangri Era here? Like, is it even worth it to go for something like this? You would banish Big Bang. Uh, you can summon one of those guys back. Trigger this. And then... I guess you can also just keep... The, but where do you make a rice art? Here? With one material? You can't even use it right off the bat. Is this what you do? Make Shang then arise. Oh, you wanna ah, you wanna overlay. Okay. You wanna do this. Yeah. So what you're? I don't. I don't think I agree with that. Cause like. You lock one zone, and you you play into Nibiru and Lava Golem just to have a Shangri Era on your field. I'm not sure if I like that. It's probably just a rise pass, right? Because you you lose to almost the same cards, right? You literally lose to almost the same cards. As before, plus Nibiru and Lava Golem. Because, like, just a rise pass, you lose to Kurikara, but honestly, this also loses to Kurikara. Like, Kurikara just ends you. Because then also, your only Arise Heart is in the graveyard. Dude. I think the only, literally, Cash Tira all, also see, feels like it's in a very rough place. It feels like a very in a very rough place. 
The only, like, the only good thing that I can see about Cash Tira is that, um, you... I feel like Cash Tira is going to be a little bit less targeted. If that makes sense. Because surely people are going to respect other decks a little bit more now. And... You... Like, I don't think you're going to see as much main deck, like, Kurikaras and whatnot, right? Depending on what the other decks do. But, like, if, if, if Purely is not in the meta, and Kash Tira is only, like, a tier 1.5 deck or whatever, I don't think people are going to main deck stuff like Kurikara as much. Punk Kash Tira is solid. Punk Kash Tira. So, like, Zeamin... Teleport to make Baron, so you end on like Barona Rysart, maybe. The problem now though is that you have nothing to do with extra engine cards. Before you could lock five, but now what you're gonna extend into, yeah, it's a fair point. You don't really have another there's not really another good rank seven to go into, right? If you have extenders. It was kind of like your go-to was Diablosis because it had so much synergy, but all the other rank sevens, I feel like, are only really good going second. I don't think it's dead. I don't think it's dead. I think a Rysard is still an incredible card and could some could do something. And the concept is still solid. I mean, look, we have a we have this base here. If we put 12 more non-engine, we have like 15 non-engine slots and a very solid engine. That still has grind game. I, I think I think it's in an okay spot, but I don't think it's like that great. Which honestly, I mean, that means they I think they did well with the ban list. If that's the if that's the spot that Kash Tira is in now, I think they did a good job. Because like I don't think it was warranted to completely kill the deck because it was relatively new. But making it weaker to the point where it's probably not the best deck anymore and needs to be played differently, I think is a good thing. What about Cash Tira Brave? Uh, you could play Cash Tira Brave. What would you take to Nationals next week? Well, I mean, I have Nationals in two weeks. I have Nationals in two weeks and I don't know yet, obviously. But um, my first instinct, obviously, I mean, I, I think anyone can guess what my first instinct is. But my first instinct is to just bring the, the Sprite uh, Runic Life Twin. That is my first instinct. But uh, I, don't hate, I don't hate the idea of, uh, of... Yeah, I like Labyrinth too. I think Branded is solid. And I think there could also just be something else. Purely, I, at this point in time, I don't see how Purely is consistent when it goes first. I think there could be something for going second Purely. I think going second Purely could be something, but I'm not sure if I'm willing to bring that to a tournament. You're going to update the list for the current format? I, we can look at it, yeah. I mean, we... I So... <sighs> Uh... Maybe you still play Frost. Texas. This is not even... What I'm doing right now is I'm not even adjusting it for the new format. 
I'm just making adjustments that I thought about making after the last, after YCS London. So I think this is my, this is what I would feel happy with. This is what I would feel happy with. And then you have six non-engine slots for whatever is the best in the format. Maybe it's talents, maybe it's evenly, maybe it's some hand traps, maybe it's whatever. Right? But I think this is roughly what I would be looking at. As a baseline. Going from 50 non-engine decks to 6 feels weird. I've, I've, I don't know what you're talking about. I've always been in the camp here. I've always been here, dude. I was never, I was never in your camp. I did never bring Cash Tira to events. We've always been winning with our engines. Without a Rysard, Tribrigate Sprite may be a deck. I mean, the thing is, a Rysard isn't gone, right? And this is also one of the big advantages of Runix decks is like... Outing the first Arise Art with Runic decks is, was never a problem. Runic decks had two problems against Cash Tira. The first one was the full back row lock, the zone lock. You couldn't beat that, pretty much. And the second problem was that even if you can out the first Arise Art, is the second one that got you. Their follow up was always a problem. Both of those things are gone. Like, Runic decks might actually have a really good matchup against. Cash Tira now, because you have so many ways to kill the first Arise Heart. Birth? Birth was a problem, but I think Birth is manageable. How does Dragon Link work? I mean, Dragon Link slash Bestial Control would probably work the same way as it always has. Shifter is an issue? Shifter is an issue. You are not wrong. Uh, if Cash Tira becomes a shifter deck again, which I honestly, I can definitely see. The, I can definitely see them just play shifter. Um, because I, from my perspective, the only deck that stopped them from playing shifter was uh, the mirror match. And if the mirror match is less common, then, you know, there we go. Uh, insert, if, uh, insert creative name. Thank you for the four months. Welcome back. Dragon Link. I don't think Dragon Link is the best deck. But I think Dragon Link is playable. Mannequin Cat is nice versus Shift. Oh, yeah, you can definitely still cite that for it. Book of Moon or Econ in Sprite? Well, that depends a lot on the format. I can't answer that just yet. Like, one thing we definitely can't do yet is, like, talk about which are the best hand traps, which are the best board breakers, which are the best tech cards. Because for that, we need to see what the format plays out like. Like, we need to, we need some, you know, we need some information on what people actually play for that. Because as of right now, I think the decks I definitely expect, like if, if I had a tournament now with this ban list, I think people would gravitate towards different sprite variations because let's be real, sprite was one of the decks that didn't get hit at all, almost. Uh, so like Melfi sprite is still there. Um, Runic sprite is still here. Um, those decks I definitely expect. I would expect some people to be on branded because that deck also didn't really get hit. Um... I think some some people would still be playing Labyrinth for sure. That deck also didn't really get hit. Sword Soul are, is always something to be considered. Dragon Link is something to be considered. And then beyond that, I don't really know what else I would expect right now. Menadium. Menadium. Maybe, yeah. I I don't think it's I don't think it's better still than what we already have, but I can see it being played. Would you consider cutting one jet and one twin spell? Uh you can, yeah. It's like it's a little less consistent then, but if you replace that with more runics, then I think that's fine.
Rika? Oh yeah, Rika is... I think Rika, as always, is going to be some sort of sleeper pick. Like, Rika is... Uh, Rika is fine. Slash good. I just feel like, for some reason, Rika always just gets disrespected. It just has its... Rika has its fan base or player base, but everyone else never really thinks about Rika. Even though they're all... They keep doing well with it, right? Is side deck the reason Runic Stun doesn't see play in the TCG? I mean, Runic Stun is probably pretty much designed to be best of one, right? Rika would hate being respected. That is also true. It's, I think it might be a deck that as soon as people respect it and know what to do against it, it gets a little bit worse. I'll say my win rate against Rika has drastically increased since I know what they're doing. <laughs> Bro, since last weekend, my freaking neck hurts, by the way. I feel like it's because I sat up straight for so long. Friggin' neck pain. No wonder. Yeah, it's, why, why does it hurt? To, why, does it, why does it have to hurt to qualify for Worlds, dude? How would a, how would a Van Crusoe li list look for you? I guess we can look at that. I guess we can look at that. Um, so I'm, I'm just going off what I looked at recently. I think they played this ratio on the main deck monsters. Right? I'm pretty sure they played this ratio. And then there was also, what is it called? Stake your soul? Uh, and then they played one of these. Which one was? Vanquish Soul Dust Devil? Or Continue? I think one of them is what they played. Hold up, let me look it up. Let me quickly look it up. They play both? Oh, okay. Wait, hold up. It was... China... Vanquish Soul... Uh, they play... Oh, yeah, they do play both. Hold up. Uh, Vanquish Soul, first place, Duelist Cup, Hong Kong. One of each, okay. What does uh, VS do? I mean... It's like... Hold up, why is there an Allen version? Oh, cherries. So, let me tell you a thing about Vanquish Soul that I think is a reason why the deck is not going to be as good in the TCG as it's cur It's currently doing pretty well in the OCG. Like, it's not... I don't think it's performing like a top-tier, tier zero deck in the OCG right now, but it's doing fine. Especially compared to the other decks that they have. Like, they have a lot of other decks. But the way they play it is basically it's just hand trap control. And one of the main selling points, I think, of Vanquish Soul in the OCG is that the deck is not as weak to Max C as other decks. Right? It has inherent synergy with Max C and it is not bad against Max C. Right? And 
both of those things are not relevant in the TCG. Which I think is a big downside to Vanquish Soul. But I think if we play Vanquish Soul in the TCG, it's still going to have to be the same approach. Right? It's just, it still has to be the same approach where you play it as a hand trap control deck, right? It has to be that. And I don't know if that's good enough, but that's what it has to be. You could play Fenrir for Earth? Yeah, you could. I mean... Uh, Earth was the most important one because... What? Why was it Earth? Oh, because it because uh you can destroy with this. I guess Fenrir is pretty good then. Fenrir gives you a little bit more oomph and it gives you an earth in hand. That seems like you would want to do that. Uh Ash seems very good. You kind of would like more fire monsters too. You can play one rice heart. I mean, you could. That's a fire searchable fire monster. I hate that. So the reason why fire is so important, by the way, the reason why fire is so important is because for stake your soul, you need to reveal a, you want to reveal a fire monster so that you can summon the best Vanquish soul from the deck, which is Raisin. Because if, Va if, if Raisin is normal or special, you can add a non-warrior Vanquish. Um, so you definitely play Rhoda. But isn't there also, isn't there another one that adds? You could add it with Durandal, right? But Durandal, I guess when you go first, Durandal doesn't work. Small World? How is Small World going to be better than Durandal? I don't know. By the way, the deck also have, has five collectors. Res oh yeah, I saw that. Heritage of the Chalice, if you really want it. Heritage. Oh, yeah, no, nah, we're not doing that. Prospy? I don't think Prospy is good because you want to you wanna draw cards, right? So the important attributes that you want to be able to reveal... Uh, <sighs> Mad Love adds a Vacker spell and trap. Dark and Earth. So for Heavy Burger, you really want to be able to reveal a Dark. Right? You want to be able to reveal a Dark for Heavy Burger so you can basically Heat Soul on their ass. Right? And then various, you want to have earth, fire, and dark. So those are the three most important attributes. And that's why Maxi is also so good. Bistials is something that if you don't main deck Bistials in this deck, you are absolutely going to side deck Bistials in Vanquish Souls. If they are good in the main deck, you even main deck them for sure because they are dark attribute, good hand traps. But yeah, I think the I think the hardest one is fire. Yeah. Magnamood can add the big guy. He is a dragon.
I mean, ma main deck bestials could be fine in this format. Because, like, they are okay against... They're okay. I mean, if people are still playing... If, if people are playing Dragon Link, they're okay against that. If people are playing Branded, they're okay against that. If people are playing... Uh, again, even against Labyrinth, they're okay. Yeah. OCG plays 1 to 2 Bestials often. Uh, yeah, but like they have, they, they are limited. <laughs> I think if you play Bestials, you definitely play them, the full Magna Moods, right? Think it's better to play DD Crow? I think it depends. Uh, I don't think DD Crow is that good for us now because Super Heavy Samurai and Purely, I think, were the most. The most popular reasons for DD Crow over Bestials was probably Super Heavy Samurai and Purely, and both of those decks are going to be hit, so. Main deck Shifter? Uh, I guess the deck doesn't really care about Shifter? Uh, I guess you lose the, nah, you lose the add back from the Rock. I don't know if I like that. I kind of don't like the fact that you lose the, the, the recursion of your Link monster. You add back and then shifter? Well, going first, yeah. Going second, you can't do that. I don't know. This deck looks okay, honestly. Unironically, this deck doesn't look bad. Uh, I don't know if it's, like, top tier, but it feels all right. You have, like, 12 more non-engine slots. Preferably, you fill them with good, like... You fill them with good monsters that fit your attributes. And maybe you, if you... So, okay, chat, what do we do with this freaking Riseheart? Is there something we can do with Riseheart? If we draw it? Or is it just going to be in our hand forever to be a fire monster? Is there a world where Fenrir is that good in this deck that we can just use uh, Field Spell and Terraforming? Just to have more access to different attributes? It's not worth that much? I'm not sure. At that point, do we play a complete cash engine? I'm not sure if, we, if that's necessary. Because, like, the, the other cash tiras don't add any of the attributes, right? You don't need wind. You don't need whatever else, right? Tanky gives you only Panthera. Yeah, Tanky isn't great. Because Panthera is also not that good. Uh, I thought this was better. If you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Quick effect, you can reveal a monster in your hand of each of the following attributes. Earth, this card can't be destroyed. Earth and fire, destroy all spell and traps. Yeah, it's like it's an okay card, but it's not that good, actually. I don't know why I thought this was better. No, the, the spell trap searcher is mad love. I think this card is pretty interesting. I think this card is interesting. I don't know if you play three. But the fact that, like, the only downside of this card is when you go first, you need to have a monster on the field. You need to have a monster on the field before you can use this. Which isn't great. Hmm. Was testing with uh, Vanquish Soul Mikanko build that works well when you have to go second? Hmm. 
I don't know if you need to do that. I feel like the deck naturally should be okay going second because of the hand traps. Uh, bro, what's the freaking planet even called? Wraith Soth. The reason why I think you could actually do this uh, is because, first of all, the, the cash tiras. Yo, holy shit, Drewski. Thank you for the six gift subs. We hit the sub. By the way, chat, there's no, there's no universe. There's no actual universe that we're on 1,400 subs right now. That's crazy. Thank you so much. I mean, the weekend, the weekend did some actual work for that, but uh, I still, you don't know how much that means to me, really. Thank you so much. And Drewski, thank us for making us, thank you for making us hit that sub goal. Weekend, yeah, the weekend did go crazy. So you deserve that one. Thank you. We will play this song when we win worlds. Easy clap. We will do that. <laughs> Is there another name? Name good fire, fire, earth, and uh, dark hand traps. Bell? I don't think Bell is good enough. Crow, I think, is interesting, but I'm not sure if you want to be on Crow and Bestials. Some play Cherries. Cherry seems okay. Like Reaper, especially in Vanquish Soul, I think you can very often play with one or two monsters on the field. Bell hits Lab and Branded. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, Bell is like a card that if you don't main it, you probably side it. The thing is, chat, the thing is, the thing why I could see this deck being viable is it has a lot of synergy with, with some cards that are exceptionally powerful in some matchups, right? Like, imagine, imagine you play against, uh, like... Mathmic or Branded, you have insane synergy with Bestials and Bell, so that's great. You play against, like, you play against Kash Tira, you have ins insane synergy with Kurikara, uh, or with different attribute Kaijus. I, I think that's an interesting trait for a deck to have, to, like, be, be flexible in its tech slots like that. Yeah. You have you even have synergy with dimension shifter if you really want to against some decks. Does extravagance make sense since you don't need your extra deck really? Uh I don't think it does because you um you you want to I think uh, maybe I'm misinterpreting it, but I feel like you really want to draw with heavy borger every time. I feel like Heavy Borger is a very uh, core centerpiece of the grind game of this deck. So locking yourself out of drawing kind of feels weird. You could probably add Desires. Uh, maybe, yeah. It could be a Desires deck.
you can just very quickly for my understanding you can use both of these effects if you have all the cards in your hand right if i have dark earth and fire i can draw a card and deal 1500 damage separately right not in the same chain but i can do both Only one? Ah, oh, only one. Okay. Oh, because it says you can only use each effect only once, but this is one effect. Yeah, okay, I see. No, never mind. I, I understood it wrong. I feel like maybe you play three of the burgers. You might play three burgers, honestly. That card kind of goaded, I think. I'm not going to lie, this deck looks incredibly based. I would love to play this deck. The only downside is it probably costs infinite money. It probably costs infinite money. Uh, infinite 39, thank you for the 8 months. Welcome back. It's a long time. Appreciate the support. Infinite and 50 cents, yeah. <laughs> What could I, what are, like, what is the last, let me fill this up with one last non-engine and just draw a couple of hands and see what it does. It, what would be... Uh, talents. Ah, I'm not sure. Lampy, thank you for the raid. Also, Himnas, thank you for the raid as well. Appreciate that. Welcome. Some play Parallel Exceed to make Heat Soul. Parallel Exceed. So the attribute on Parallel Exceed doesn't matter, but because you have a Link one that points down, I guess, it's a good extender. Uh, I can see that. Let's, let's look at some other lists from the OCG. Maybe they have some interesting ideas. Not here, though. No Vanker Salts here. Here are some Vanker Salts. They play Shifter. They play the little... What is that? Our Tool Synchron? We don't have that yet. They play that. They all play Small World, which I think they're out of their minds. Okay, there's not that many. All right. Why no small world? I, I mean, look, the thing is, maybe small world is actually okay in the deck. I just hate the card, dude. I just hate small world, but maybe you do something like that. I don't know if the bridges work out right now. I don't know if the bridges work with this list, but maybe it's fine. Probably is. You could play Desires, yeah. 
Maybe. Check Vlad's Twitter. He topped two OCG logos with the rescue ace. All right, Vlad is in uh, Vlad is in Japan right now. I saw some tweets. I saw some tweet tweets. Is he just there for like uh, vacation? Bro, Vlad, this is such an OCG thing to do, right? The the writing your tournament reports like this. I've never seen anyone in the TCG do that. Vlad goes to Japan for like a week and suddenly acts like <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, they let him play with uh, they let him play with TCG cards. I think at locals sometimes they don't care. Can you play with TCG cards there? Officially, I don't think they are legal. Officially, I don't think so. But I think most at at most locals, they don't really care, and a lot of OCG players also do it because for OCG players, it's kind of like they're. Uh, High rare is importing stuff from the TCG, right? It's kind of like the, like how, that's kind of how it works because they don't have our cards. It's kind of like a prestige thing to have like TCG cards. Uh, and at most locals, they don't care. At official tournaments, though, you I don't you you cannot. I'm pretty sure it's the same as for us. They go mental for our high rarity stuff. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's why our ulti maxis are so expensive. Do is it is it because they don't have ulti maxi? Did the did the OCG never get ulti maxi, and that's why ours are so expensive? Because it's still legal over there. I've never thought of it like that. That could actually be the reason. They have, but it looks different. Okay. Anyways, uh, I don't even know what you put into the extra deck here, but let me quickly look at this. See, this hand just has to be sick, right? This just has to be sick. There's no way it's not. We already have fire, but we can still add this. And then we stake your soul, reveal this. Special a Vanquish Soul from the deck with the same attribute. So we special Rosin. Or Raisin. And that adds a non-Warrior Vanquish Soul. Do we add Mad Love? To add Dust Devil or what? Yeah, it's probably Mad Love. Normal summon Mad Love. Add this. Then we can go target a non machine Vanquish Soul. We haven't even linked yet. The revive is better? Oh, okay. Well, I we have two options, basically. We have two options. Let's just say it like that. You can normal summon Rice Heart to make a Rice Heart. Uh... Oh shit, Heavy Burger is a level 7. So, okay, hold up. We don't... Uh, 
you don't want a macro in this deck yeah i think i don't think we need to go for uh, we can look into the lines with the rice art with the rice art later but just in general we could just special this by returning one of these two to the hand we would probably want to return this one right because we want to link this one off actually it's the same thing right so we make this we draw a card useless we make Vanquisher, add back Raisin. It does print cards. It does print cards, because on the opponent's turn, we draw another card. It, it's kind of interesting. Hands like this are a little bit scary. The hands that don't have... Basically, the hands that don't have access to Raisin are the problem. Uh, it's fine. We're going to draw into it. So you... This... Uh, we kind of need this back in our hand because we don't have a dark right now for Borger. So we probably just go. We go bounce for Borger. And then we draw a card by revealing it. I mean, we do have Earth, Fire, Dark, so we, at the very minimum, have the pop here, too. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's an interesting concept. You, If you work on it, Okay, we don't talk about this one. Any hand, I'm pretty sure any hand that has Raisin is, is pretty insane. Uh, I don't know how much it would hurt. I don't know how much it would hurt to lose your Pluton or your Panthera. If, if it doesn't hurt that much, then you could maybe play Desires. But if you play Desires, you also have to worry about losing your one-off spells. So maybe that's not what you want to do, but maybe it's fine. You know? Oh shit, the 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 bot the the chat thingy for the Mastodol grind is still here. Let me disable that really quick. The grind message. Why not play the busted trap? Hold up, let me look that up in a second. Uh, chat commands, world's grind off. There we go. Okay. You're not doing 60 hour live streams every weekend? Nah, believe it or not. Okay, which one is the broken trap? Trinity Burst? Oh, that one. Uh, I think that's an option. I think that's an option. I, I, they, they are not using it in the OCG, but that card is not bad. Because you just bounce all their shit. It's like so hard to play through this card. Turn on the remix. We reached the goal. Dude, we already played the remix for the goal. Don't scam me. I'm not updating. The only reason why I'm not updating the goal right now is because I feel like 1400 is more than enough subs. I don't want you guys to be shooting any higher. So we'll just leave it at that. But we've already had the remix. I feel like it's stronger than the spells. Well, it's... Uh... It's yes, but it's weaker going second, right? Update this, okay, dude. If you if you wanna if you wanna have another goal, I, I I'll give you one, dude. 
if you all want to spend subs so bad, go ahead. So, I can still see playing one of this. Uh, I can also see playing less of the Kash Tiras, but honestly, the, um, the fact that opening with, opening with the planet, or basically Fenrir, Opening with Fenrir in this deck seems completely insane to me because you can, it turns on this card. You need, there can be only one. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if you need that. I think you either play full cash engine or just Fenrir. Hear me out. I don't think drawing two of these cards is bad because if you draw Fenrir plus Race Soth, you just have Fire and Earth in hand. Is that a bad thing? I don't think that matters too much. I think having a free Fire and Earth in hand is still fine. You're happy with that, I think. And you just randomly gain... Uh, also, you also randomly gain uh, attack bonus for everything. You Maybe you play less of the field spell. Maybe you only play like two or something. But I don't think... That you should... I, I think you should play Wraith Soth. Because it's like... It turns on your Durandal. It turns on your... Take your soul. And if you draw multiples, it's not that bad. I think it's fine. Can't we play like one Unicorn, one Theosis? We can. Theoretically, if we want to do that, we can think about it. It's something I need. I need. I. I would need practice for with this deck. I, we can probably. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I. I don't want to play with it today. But tomorrow we can start testing and tier listing and everything. Uh, Yao one fanboy. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate you. Careful, rice heart locks you. I. Yeah, I'm aware. But I don't think it matters too much because it only locks you for the rest of the turn. It locks you for the rest of the turn. And I don't think that's a problem. If Droll is in the format, the cash engine gets a lot worse. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to be a Droll format. I don't think it's going to be a Droll format because the decks that were most weak to Droll all got hit the hardest on the ban list. Like... Uh, Super Heavy Samurai was the, the main reason why it turned into a draw format. And, um... That's gone, pretty much. Congrats on making worlds. Thank you. Appreciate you. Deck doesn't need to summon a lot. Only make the rock so the lock is fine. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. It's just you, you make the uh, you make the you make the rock first thing, and then that's fine. The only problem is I don't think this deck is gonna get the representation it maybe deserves because they just made it unholy expensive. Are there pre-sales yet for uh, the set? By the way, that is something I wanted to look at. Uh, wild survivors. There are. Okay, hold up. Let me jump over on card market because I was very, I was interested in that. Also, I am majorly disappointed that they didn't give uh, they didn't give enemy controller or allure of darkness a collector's rare. That is literally the craziest thing to me. Uh, let's sort by price. It's honestly not that expensive. See, the thing is. Uh, okay, Stake Your Soul is a 20 euro card. Rock is a 20 euro card. Raisin is a 20 euro card. You need three play sets of e uh, You need a play set of each. So that is 180. That's 180 euros right there. Mad Love is a 15 euro card, which is also probably a play set. So that's another 45. So that's already 225. Uh, and then they play two Caesars, which is another 30 bucks. So that's 255. Heavy Borger, another ultra rare. Two or three of. Let's, let's assume three. So we're on 285 now. We're on 285. Just for the core. 
Mad Love is a one of for sure. There's no way Mad Love is a one of. That's the spell and trap searcher. That's a good card. It's also a dark. I don't think it's a one of, Skrelp. Maybe two, but I don't think it's a one of. Still cheaper than Cash Hero on release? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I was joking for budget reasons. Oh, okay. I think I think it's a three of, but uh, yeah. So it's the thing is. It's the core, the core. Oops, the core um is gonna run you something like three hundred bucks, which for a deck that I'm not even sure is tier one or tier two is a lot of money, right? Like, the deck is not as good as Kashira, not even close. When Kashira first released, right? Or when Kashira became top tier, Kashira was a little bit more expensive than this, but it was also a little bit better. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think Vanquishol could be an interesting meta call if people don't know how to play against it. Uh, and it could be solid because, yeah, but only really if, um, like, if cards like Bestials, Bell, Kurikara, basically the Dark Earth and Fire hand traps, if those cards are good in this upcoming format, then this deck becomes good. Is there still delay? No, of course there's no delay on my regular streams. <laughs> I only have delay. I only had delay to prevent stream sniping in the tournament. I did. I don't have delay when I stream normally. <laughs> Where Tigaboo? Where Tigaboo? Floodgate. Floodgate does not stop this deck. Where is it? Why are you not playing the Floodgate that does not have synergy with your deck? Benjamin, thank you for the Prime, and Blade Mercury, thank you for the four months. Uh, what tier do you put Vanquish in? I haven't thought about it yet. I'm going to make a tier list. A very first, keep that in mind. I The format is as new to me as it is to all of you guys. So I will, I will make a tier list tomorrow on stream, but it's going to be very, like, you know, take it with a grain of salt, basically. Currently... I would probably put this deck into tier 2. I think it has solid... What I'm looking at here is something I like. I might be biased because... I'm going to be honest. I just love the playstyle of Vanquish Souls. So I want it to be good. Maybe. Maybe that's why I'm, estimate, I'm overestimating it. Because... You know, sometimes I have this type of thing where... I, I feel like everyone is guilty of this. But sometimes I just can't help but think something is good. Even just because I like what it does. Right? I just like how this deck plays. It's kind of like the branded, regained, branded uh, beast type of problem that I've been talking about before. It's like, I just love the idea that these type of cards represent, right? I kind of like that. Banker Soul at Nats confirmed. Dude, the world where I, where I actually go to nationals and feel like Banker Soul is the pick is a good world. You know what I mean? That's why, that's why I'm coping like that. Um, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's top tier, but I think it's playable. Another Libromancer incident? Dude! Libromancer was good, okay? The format was ass. It didn't matter what I would have played. Just saying, Punk Engine could be decent with Earth and Dark Monsters. Uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. The problem is, is the Punk Engine maybe too large? Right? Is, and also, the punk cards usually don't end up in your hand, right? Like, the punk cards usually, they take your normal summon if you don't have teleport, which isn't great, because you want a normal summon raisin. And uh, you also, the punk cards all usually end up on the field first, right? You usually start, like, normal summon the army and do your thing. And um, I don't think they stick in your hand, like, you know, like, hand traps... By default, if you go first, hand traps will, will be in your hand. Uh, and Fenrir creates another card in your hand. Those type of cards make a lot of sense with Vanquish Soul. They have inherent synergy, whereas I don't know if Punk has that. Like not, not every card has synergy with this deck only because it is a Dark Earth or Fire. 
But um, yeah, I mean, Zia, I mean, it, it's an interesting card for this deck, but I don't know if you normal summon Zia, I mean, how do you realistically get into your Vanquish Soul combos? Right? How do you do that? How do you realistically get Raisin onto the field after normal summoning Zeami? Because that's what it's all about, right? That's what it has that that's what it all has to be about is how do you get Raisin onto the field? Without I mean, Stake Your Soul is a freaking busted card, but that's like you can't rely on that. Because you can't search if honestly there is one thing that would make Vanquish Soul completely busted. That's if this was a Vanquish Soul card. If Stake Your Soul was called Vanquish Soul, I'm pretty sure this deck would have been tier 1. Because then Dr. Madlove could search it. If Dr. Madlove could just search Stake Your Soul and then you with any fire monster you can just special raisin and go from there. Dude. It'd be so good. I'm trying really hard to not buy this deck. That's the thing, right? For me to invest into this deck, I would I would have to be very convinced that I actually want to play it at a tournament because I don't want to spend that much money on a deck that then is going to end up sitting around. I'm upset that Madlove has no consistency card to add. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Prosp to dig for attributes seems necessary. Uh, there's definitely a universe where you play Prosperity. The problem is, whenever you activate Prosperity, you already know that you don't go plus one with the Borger on turn one, and that's kind of cringe. Uh, it's kind of like playing Prosperity in Life Twins, right? Where in Life Twin decks, uh, sometimes you need it for consistency, but it always feels bad to activate it because you know that you skip on draws later. Right? If this deck got a light monster, it would be busted. What do you need a light monster for? Everything is about earth, fire, and dark. Man, the more I think of this, the more I think about this, the more mad I get what they did with the rarities. Because, dude, this is like... <laughs> I just love the concept of this deck. I want to play it without spending a fortune on it, dude. Can I just try this deck without spending a million, a more billion dollars on it? It makes me mad. It genuinely makes me mad. I just want to play this deck without... Like, I just want to try it and get it. DB? Yeah, but, like, not, not just on DB. I want to, like, maybe go to locals with it or play it at a regional or something. Or, like, play it, play it at a tournament that I don't care as much about just to, like, have fun with it because I just think it's cool. But, dude, why does it have to be... Ugh. Man. Can we play Blaster in this? I mean, no one is stopping you, but it's not going to be good. <laughs> I uh, This kind of card design is what Yu-Gi-Oh! needs more of? Dude, this card design, honestly, is, is beautiful. Vanquish Soul card design is freaking pog. Imagine being pack right now as well. Because that's another thing. This deck, <laughs> they not only gave it, what, seven ultra rares? They also made five of those collectors rare. Which one is collectors rare? Raisin is collectors rare. I'm pretty sure the big guy is collectors rare. Stake your soul is collectors rare. I think the link is collectors rare. What is the last one? Is it Madlove or Borger? Mad Love is another color. Dude, if you want to, if your pack, you need three, six, eight, eleven, fourteen collectors rare. Fourteen collectors rares to play Vanquish Soul, dude. My god. I don't know why you're so opposed to playing Plunder. I feel like they have a similar interesting playstyle. Who, who said, whoever said that I was opposed to playing Plunder? 
I, I tested Plunder for YCS London. The Plunder Runic deck, I was a big fan of that deck. I like Plunder. I've never said anything against Plunder. I think Plunder is fine. Powerpuff is making fun of you on stream? What do you mean? What is Farfa saying? What if everyone in chat donates a buck? You could get that deck going pretty fast. Well, that is true, but at the same time, I've said this before, I don't want... This is not how this works. Chat is not supposed to pay for my Yu-Gi-Oh cards, you know? Chat is supposed to support the stream because they like the content and not to make me able to afford cards. That's not how this works. The thing is, I could buy this deck if I really wanted to. That's not technically the problem. I just don't know if it's justified still. Like, even if you have 300 bucks, I'm not sure if you should do it. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's really not worth it's very mid right now. I mean, I... Yeah, probably. I probably want it to be better than it actually is. It's more like I like the style of the deck. That's why I'm feeling like I could make it work, you know? Yo, Weenie Peenie, thank you to five gift subs. Appreciate that. Very generous. Appreciate you. Well, that's... uh, Yo, five gift subs is already half of one of the ultra rares. <laughs> We're almost there. Easy clap. Musket all over again. Was Musketeer ever expensive? Was it really? I don't remember that. Can I send you my going second purely list? Uh, I'm not doing Deck Doctor right now, but it's something that we will look at tomorrow, probably. Uh, purely, I mean, actually, you can send over the list. I'll look at it. We have some time left today. Caspar and Starfire or whatever peaked at 20s, really? The real question is, how much do you want to gamble? They give it a broken card. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right about that. If they, if they give them a really broken card, then the deck is going to be unholy expensive. If this, if this deck ever, like, actually, unironically, unironically, like, as much as I hate to say this, as much as I hate to say this, for the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, it's probably better if Vanquish Soul does not become top tier. Which is a fucked up thing to think about, because it's such a cool deck, but imagine if this deck gets tier 1. Imagine how expensive it would be, and I don't want Yu-Gi-Oh! to be that expensive. I think it's bullshit if Yu-Gi-Oh! is that expensive, I just don't want it to happen. I don't want people to be gatekept out of Yu-Gi-Oh! because the top tier deck is like a thousand bucks. But imagine if this deck actually was tier zero. Right? Because, like, look at purely ultra rares. Purely ultra rares went up to, like, 50 euros at some point. If the same thing would happen to freaking Vanquish Soul, I think it'd be worse than Cash Tira. I think it would genuinely be worse than Cash Tira. And just the fact that, just the fact that I have to sit here and be like, it's probably better for the community if this incredibly well-designed deck does not become good, is kind of sad. I think it's kind of sad to think about it that way. Right? I don't like, I don't like that. Wasn't Fenrir like 70 when Darkwing Blast released? Uh, it was like 50 or 60. 
But, um, yeah. I just hope the set flops so Co Money realizes hurting customers suck, but that'll 120% not happen. I mean, on the other hand, though, I've thought about this a little bit more. It's, it's, isn't it really just as simple as if you want Vanquish Soul, you buy this set, but if you don't want Vanquish Soul, you just have no reason to buy this set? Isn't it literally just that? Which I'm not sure if it's that... Uh, You know. Are you overreading my... No, I saw the question. I'm just talking about something completely different right now, and I haven't decided yet anyways. I'm going with Quantle and someone else. I want Ground Zeno. I mean, I don't think you have a problem with, with that. Like, Ground Zeno... How expensive is Ground Zeno? Oh, wait, Ground Zeno is still 20 bucks? Interesting. Okay, well. I'll buy, a, I'll buy a box for the dinos? I mean, yeah, but, like, that's the... That is the good news, I guess, is that if you are looking after, like, Hungry Burger or dino stuff, all you need to really do is either buy one box or something or just get some of the singles, right? You don't have, like, the... Basically, full dino core is 60 bucks. Because you need three Ground Zeno and the rest is, is pennies. Full freaking bank, uh, full uh, Novell deck is probably the full freaking Novell core is like twenty bucks for a playset of that card, and twenty bucks for a playset of that card. Forty bucks, you have the full core, essentially. So for all the for all the rogue and casuals, this set is actually quite okay. All right. Vanquish Soul or Menadium to buy right now. Uh, well, I think um, I like Vanquish Soul more, but it's unholy expensive. I don't know if I don't know if Vanquish Soul gives you the bang for your buck. I, as I learned, that's how you say it. Menadium is probably pretty cheap, right? So. If you like that deck, then it's fine. I don't think it's top tier either, but, you know. Going second purely. Okay, where are you? Bro, Lucent. What the hell? What does Lucent do? If this card is discarded, special summon it. Oh, it's just special summon. Okay. Playset Visas is almost 100 euros. Is it really? Is Visas that expensive? Holy shit. Well, I mean, it's 75. Almost 100 is still a stretch. So you go blind second and you still play Eradicator and Purely Leap? I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't think you should be doing that. Do you think Sword Soul will be viable in a new format? I mean, Sword Soul is always kind of viable currently. I think it's all right. What are some other decks that you guys were wondering whether they were good? Some stuff that I might want to... I, I'm, I'm trying to think of the decks that I want to include in tomorrow's tier list, basically. So you can ask away. How about Mikanko Libero right now? Uh, it's probably alright, but I'm, I've never been a big fan of it. Rikka is solid. Gold Pride Punk, I think, is okay. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Draco Slayer. Rikka is solid. Salamangrate is Copium. Dark World is Copium. Dragon Link is good. Runic is, is insane, I think. Dino Morbia is not great. Rescue Ace isn't great yet. Purely needs to be played going second. But then maybe it's okay. Math Mech is Copium. Labyrinth is pretty strong. I'm brewing with Super Heavy Therion. I don't think Super Heavies are dead. 
You think cash is still tier one? I think it's like I'd put it in solid. I think I'll put it in like tier one point five. Tier limit is copium. Add ignister is copium. Flu is like tier two. Flu is okay. Sprite is in a good spot. I don't know which version yet, but Sprite is decent. Melfi Sprite or Runic Sprite. It's going to be fine. Bestial Synchro. I mean, when we get Assault Synchron, I will definitely be trying that deck. But I'm not sure until then. If by Bestial Synchro you just mean like Dragon Link with like access to this Potter and stuff, then that's probably fine. Somehow Tyr got top 16 at YCS Philly. Is there a deck profile for that? Hold up. I haven't really... That's like one other thing why I don't like the timing of this ban list is because I felt so much less excited about um, YCS Philadelphia, UK Nationals, all that type of stuff. I was going to do all... Like, I was going to do recaps for all of that this week, but it just feels pointless. But I did... Okay, there is a top 16 tier limit list. Let me see that. Card overflow. I'm here with... Nick, Spandola. All right, and what'd you do just today, Nick? Uh, got top 16 with the tier limits. With tier limits and cash... Free tier cash, just like the best card. You want to play free. Uh, two Rhino. Bro, old T Rysard is kind of busted. But I was worried about breaking the set. I might try three. Uh, one of each of the good ones. Obviously. They are limited. Uh, <laughs> uh, I the Caesar card. I didn't play Medora because I didn't want to like... Throwing it a lot kind of sucks. Uh, you just had to like make the one count. And one diviner because it's like a foolish for those. Okay, why only one diviner instead of like... I've seen people play this deck that play one Rhino Heart and three diviner. So, so um, I wanted two Rhino because it's very low, but it's the video. It's because, like, uh, yeah, the video is very low. Rizard, maybe banishing, like, a card. You know, for things that are at one, I can't. I have no control over. But like things that are important, I want to play two of. Uh, this isn't as important, and I didn't play cross sheet to like bring it back. So I just played one, so I just wouldn't drink on it. Also. Okay. I wanted to fit non-engine. Right. Castira format. Uh, and then I also play three can of swap, obviously, uh, with poly. Poly. Just the one poly, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's good. Uh, I play. This is uh, what helped me a lot. In all seriousness, though, what do you even fuse into if you don't draw one of the tier limits? Can you even? I don't understand. Uh, Okay. So, uh, okay, Mally so Denier. Oh, those like ultra rare Mallys are nice. I don't know, like other versions of the deck that I've seen. Um, I decided to play this because it helps better with consistency and it's um, it's easy to make the interest. Chimera going second is pretty busted. I love Chimera. Uh, Denier lets you, like, you know, summon Mally again and extends. Maybe go into a like, string play. No, it's really cool how it guarantees at least like a predator plant yeah, at, at you, bare minimum. And if you just like, you know, there's times where you just like mill a name and like mm -hmm. no king of the swaps and stuff like that. With one of these, you can just go into dangerous, and dangerous can just like immediately start to play. Immediately, up. yeah. So it like adds a lot to the. Consistency. And you have the Beatrice on their turn too. Right. I just like cited this out going second against Cashier mostly. Oh, okay. Uh, in case they like banish one of our swords. And then one Nishudo. This actually put like a lot of work in today. Uh, this could copy, or this could turn to level four off the Nier and then go. Make a Baron with these two. Oh, wow. Or um, if I just have like a level four of uh, Sheeran, I could copy this, make a level three, and then I stick this on board. Oh, <laughs> oh my so god, throwing. Board. And that's Baron there too. And that's also Baron, so. Yeah. The pseudo is really good. Just a good extender. I never like went into time. I, I got one draw, but it's fine. Uh, so that was like the engine monsters, and then non engine, I played three of these. Uh, this was like actually kind of okay. Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I went first and this would just be in my opening hand and didn't do anything. Right. Uh, and I only played like two purely. And it was only like good like once or twice. Um, okay, so I probably thought, probably not maybe in the next tournament. Yeah, probably just a damage scene, honestly. Definitely next. Oh, wow. Just with one Arise Heart, I would play damage scene because it's an Aqua. And a lot of times I need like another Aqua to make a. Collado Heart. Right. And I play three Gamma. This was mostly for. Uh, Alright, that's not possible heart, right? anymore. Well, it's mostly for Shifter, actually. Oh. Uh, it was, 
I thought the best answer of going second, and also it's not scroll, and I thought a lot of people play that. A lot of things like are you all happy about the gamma limit by the way because i'm kind of happy with it i don't i don't really i was not a, i was never a big fan of gamma because i hated playing driver i kind of like it I, I don't i don't love I, I it always it felt bad to get gamma because it's such a high impact hand trap and it never felt good when your opponent didn't draw driver you know what i mean and playing it myself always like i often had to do it because it just felt so good but then having to put driver into my deck always felt awful. I don't know. On your turn, it felt good. Yeah, that is true. If you had a deck that could do that. But like, yeah, it's just a pretty hard. Uh, Foolish uh, Just one of these. Yeah, I didn't want to break, and I need to make room. Especially any card in your deck, too. Yeah, so, um, so this card to send all, you know, any of these to, like, add something. So, um, I wanted this because I needed just more ways to mill. Uh, two of this, you know, one of this, and, uh, two of the karma. This mostly sends this, and, you know, I don't have field to mill. Mm -hmm. And, and it can also add the Sullyak. Most people don't notice that the Sullyak says Beezus Star Frost yeah. on it, too. This could, and this could search any of these, also. Yeah. So, um... You know, it was, it was good. I, usually, like, going I mean, it's an interesting uh, concept. I don't hate it. I'm just not sure if it's... Like, I don't think... It, it doesn't feel... I'm, like, I'm looking at this deck. I'm, I'm like, okay, I understand how it works. That's kind of cool, but I'm just not scared of that. I feel like... Mm. Uh, so I was just like Gets banished off Rise Heart, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, Diablosis and Unicorn. Uh, this card was really good. You know, uh, as a quick effect, you pick a card out of your hand to uh, dump a two zero. So you just pick a card, you send Maui, uh, or you send Denier if you don't already have it. And then I like this over playing Window because you can pick cards out of your hand, you usually just pick some Miller, like Dio and Hellback, or Trivia Karma if you draw. So I really like that. He was definitely running three Pearl of Rhinos, yeah. <laughs> there were three Pearl of Rhinos. Really don't worry. You see the first poly, and like, sometimes it's just devastating. Help to win, and then I play one of these. Oh, DPE. Yeah, bro. I, Tell me how you make that. So, before I was playing Super Poly and uh, and or Lubellion. So Lubellion could uh, pitch a card and fuse this using your banished Mallies and stuff. The Super Poly can fuse on the fields. You know, like you have Denier and Mally. But the only times I ever made this was when I like hard drew Poly or King of the Swarm, and I could end on Denier and uh, Mally. Mm. So I made this like four times. <laughs> oh, man. It was, it was kind of, it was, That's so like, many. <laughs> Are you rested well after almost like, three days of no sleep? Like, well, I I wouldn't say I'm rested well yet, but I'm getting better. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yesterday was uh, bad. Yeah, Today uh, is fine. The day is getting better. <laughs> and then uh, I played two of these. Uh, I put the second one in last minute because um, I am playing talents and thrust on the side, and you know I just didn't want to banish this, and I would have no play. Right. So. Yeah. I got Diablosis a lot, and then I crossed it, and they didn't rip this, so I think it was good. Uh, I, made, I made the second one, actually, in top cut. Again, Super Heavy Samurai, we were just top decking. I won with one material, and then he just, like, made his own, uh, he made Bagusa or something, or made a Zeus or something, I don't know. And then I, like, attacked over it. <laughs> he was able to, like, get an extra, uh, yeah, and board wipe. Stack the second one on that. Yeah, yeah it was, it was, that's it was awesome. Cool. I won me my top, uh, 32. Uh, Baron, just crazy as far. And then just two legs. So this is obvious. Um, Air key. This is um, another way for a discard out. Okay. So uh, you pitch a Edo, Kelbeck, Trivia Karma. Okay. And then this also helps you climb and spread, depending on your set. Uh, or sometimes I just ended on it, I would add a Toast Spell in the entry. Wow. Oh no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, no what, yeah. that's awesome, yeah. It's like guaranteed follow up and extender. And then uh, for the side, I don't think it was really good, my side deck. But I was kind of scared of Super Heavy, like for good reason. Uh, so I played 3 Gold, uh, 3 Nib, I put this in against Cash. I only got it once, and I kind of blew him out because I just tributed for Driver, thrusted, and just oh, wow. destroyed him. Yeah. Damn. Uh, three Tribute for Driver is awesome. Uh, I was scared of... Um, Branded, right? Expulsion, Branded, Math and Mech. Mech. Yeah. And uh, it's also good against Super Heavy. Like, I, like I don't think that I don't think the side the side deck matters much for us because it, it was for a different format. But the main deck besides the gamma would theoretically carry over to this format. Uh, almost 
a hundred percent right there's nothing besides the gamma yeah besides the gamma you could play theoretically the exact same deck right now you can try it it doesn't feel like anything to be super scared of unless they hit the like i feel like it's very scary if they hit the high roll with agito or kelbeck i feel like still even with all of them limited the scary part about this deck is the ishizu cards right because every once in a while this deck is going to be freaking opening uh, or milling Agito or Kelbeck, and then you're just like, oh my god, please not again. Right? Um, yeah, I don't know. All right, I need some more time to think about this. I need some more time to think about this, and I know it's early, but I'm going to call it a day now because I'm, I'm starting to get tired. My rhythm is still not really, like, fixed, and uh, my, my, yeah, I don't know, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. My neck hurts from sitting all weekend. Uh, I'm going to call it a day here. I'm going to think about the format a little bit and we're going to do a tier list tomorrow. Uh, sorry for the little bit shorter stream, but I'll send you guys over to, to Farfa. Uh, I think he's still, he might still be interviewing the, the first place from, uh, from the, the, the Master Duel Worlds race. Uh, Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for all the support. And once again, thank you so much for all the support over the weekend as well. Uh, and I will be back tomorrow. And we do the, the TCG tier list and all that kind of